hey, this is Deuce. I'm testing all the mics. I think they all sound good to me. You'll check with the headphones when we all kind of like get on there. Um, but audio and video recording, that can be nothing else. Test, 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 test. Bare minimum, we have audio, you know? Bare minimum. So if I don't hit that button, we do not have a podcast. Nope. After a long podcast, in which we land De'Aaron and Rase Fox for the first time in studio. I transfer the video, and what happened, Morgan? There was no audio. Zero audio. We it, were freaking out. Beautiful video. Beautiful video. No audio. But Morgan told me, oh, is everything good with audio? Blah, 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 blah. And so I hit that button. Otherwise, we would have no fun <laughs> podcast, and I would be so upset. What? That's why we left in... The little behind the scenes footage in the beginning of this pod. Hope you enjoyed us pulling back the curtain. Now, enjoy our conversation with Rase and De'Aaron. Deuce and Mo. Deuce and Mo. Deuce and Mo. They tell you what they know. Deuce and Mo. Deuce and Mo. Deuce and Mo. The podcast that you know. We are literally. Yeah, we're just going. We're just going. Let's do. By the, the way, damn this thing. is okay. We are. We just start now. That's our new thing. We oh my just god. Start. Um, we're live right now. So oh, you guys get just, it. Yeah, yeah, we're not live. No warm oh, we're we're just we, we just go. There's no like, hey, it's Juice and Mo. It's just starting. Everyone knows that we. Yeah. Okay. Um, go on. So you guys, wait. You guys just came from a workout now. But hold the mic up, like to your. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> we got to start. I mean, that's how you. Yeah. Wait, um, wait, you said you guys, both of you? The, she's always at the she's gym. Always at the, yeah. The gym. During the summer, like... No, no, no. During the season, she can't, she's not going to be at practice and stuff, so... No, yeah. I, I don't think that we should say we, she can't, because I think... <laughs> she probably If could. we asked, I would be able to. But I respect his workplace. Aww. That's, I'm like, go ahead. It's but fine. during the summer, there, there's stuff. not... That rule's not in place. She's, yeah, no, she's coming to the workouts. Yeah. And when you say coming to the work, like, you're hooping. No, not anymore. I tore my Achilles last May. I know, but I didn't know Out if, like, there. you know, nah, it took you... my, when, like, going through that, yeah. through the rehab. Yeah. And we were also staying in Coronado at the time at a two story house. Yes. I had to climb stairs. Oh. And there was no graceful way to climb those stairs <laughs> while having an Achilles tear. And then we oh we ended up God. leaving the, you know, the little scooter that, he, that they give you? Yes. We left one scooter at the top of the stairs <laughs> and one scooter at the bottom. <laughs> So, so that we away, didn't have to pick it up and it take it upstairs. It took away all of my will to ever play again. I'll Wait, shoot around. I was going to say, you don't even shoot, but you shoot. I'll shoot. shoot. Okay. Uh, sure, yeah, they'll do like shooting competitions and stuff like that. But, but Ooh, I'm not, that breaks. That I can't do it. I can't. I'm trying breaks to my you, heart. I went through it and it was just. Just be the, the, like the injury was that traumatic that you're like, I can't. Not traumatic. Uh, it was just a long time to get back. Like you're stiff. Your ankle's always swollen. Mm. Like respect to like yeah. Clay. The fact that he was able to come back and play the way or KD. Like it's a lot. Kelsey Plum. She's a monster. Yeah. Came back from. And Achilles and and went to the All Star game. And yeah. I do feel like once you're done playing and then you tear your Achilles, it's like yes. there's no real why? reason to get really back. Yeah, yeah. trying to do it again. But it's like why? But but it's like this is my only thing because like I you can relate. To, I know per se you can relate to this too. I had shoulder injuries that basically like really ended my right. basketball life. Right. But like I crave the shit out of basketball. Like I right. crave like when I see you guys out there, like when it's more of a practice gym, not like out on the NBA floor, it's almost like, oh, I just want to touch that basketball. Oh, I want to go. Like but you don't get I do, that. I do feel like it's different because like you need your shoulder to even just shoot a ball. Okay. Like she can still shoot a ball. Okay. She's just there's no playing defense and running and trying to explode to go. As far as the competitiveness, yes, I do miss it. I totally yeah. get it. So Aww. I totally get that. She plays pickleball. Oh not, not basketball though. Yeah. <laughs> But are you just, are you killing everyone at pickleball at least? No, girl. Oh. I, I try to do. She's a good. Calories. She's good. I've never played. I, <laughs> I know it's played? no. I know it's like the next big thing. I just feel oh, like it's like. A, it's fun. I heard there's a lot of bad injuries with it though. Can't you? Get, you know, yeah, you she have tore to her know her your injuries. limits. <laughs> know your limits when you play pickleball, no, but please. My dad. So we're <laughs> so her dad's mid forties. He's yeah. playing, and like I'll do the slice. So he's like running for it, and I'm thinking like just stop. Like yeah. you're not gonna get it. Don't. So he tries to. 
let's preface this by saying he's always been an athletic guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, your dad. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He played basketball. Okay. Well, obviously, at some point, the athleticism him. goes away. Yeah. Yeah. You lose it. So he's running after the ball, and pickleballs don't bounce up like tennis balls. They don't bounce as high. So he's trying to get it, and now he can't stop. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So he tries to jump over the net. No, oh, no, no. His okay. leg gets caught. He's like falling. And I'm like, okay, I'll catch him. And I'm like, I probably shouldn't do that. I probably <laughs> shouldn't catch jump. him. <laughs> you just let him fall? Yes. Well, he it's either that or take out my leg. So like we're say. both hurt. So That's actually a smart move. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to play basketball. Sorry. The Kings organization <laughs> takes too. So I'm like, okay, I shouldn't do that. So I like jump over him when, he come, when he's uh, falling. And I'm like, I was going to help you, but... It probably wasn't in both of our best interests to do that. <laughs> was um, was he fine? No, he was fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he was fine. That was, the, was, that was fine. literally the first possession, though. Uh, so he's like, "Okay, know your limits," and like, he okay. stopped going for balls." There I you hit, go. I hit my Carlos slice, and he couldn't get to it. Have you two played pickleball against each other? Yes. <laughs> he's won every time. Oh, Ooh. we but played it's been close. The first, no, you won. One. Did you win one? We played in Jamaica for the first time. Did I win that one? I think you won one. Oh. We played for like we had one game for like forty five minutes. Pickleball. Damn. Yeah, I can. Because you can only score on, on offense, offense when you're serving. You can't score if you're not serving. Oh, my. And, and if you serve, you get the ball. Or if you get a point, you get the ball back, and it's yes. like you're on offense. Yeah. Oh. So it's not like it's not scored like tennis. It's okay. Different. So then I guess playing pickleball together, the competitiveness is, is there. Oh, she's thrown paddles. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. During pickleball or ping pong? No, you th- no, you haven't broke you you broken paddles <laughs> during ping pong. <laughs> oh, wait, she, when you break, are you like slamming on the table or are you yeah. like? Or she threw it against the floor and then it breaks. But she hasn't broken a pickleball paddle yet. But she's thrown Not it. Not my finest moment, but it you it's like it's a great moment. Are you kidding me? That just that yeah, that shows fun. your fire, you know, and too much fire. Like, yeah. Well, that. She's. I don't get there a whole bunch. It's more like <laughs> you're disappointed because I, I get, get disappointed at when I mess up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like it's different if he scores on a good bucket. It's fine. But like when I mess up, mm. I'm like, I'm not supposed to mess that's up when the on. paddle goes flying. That's when yeah. it goes yeah, yeah, yeah. flying because yeah. I'm not used to making mistakes like that. Um. First of all, thanks for coming here. Oh yeah, it's a, you, the first ever in studio, and it there we go. probably makes sense why Made it's the first ever. It's like a hundred square feet, I think. Not even. No, no it's is it? not even hundred square feet. Is it twenty five? Twenty five? Oh, dude. Well, okay. What, what do you think we of this setup? Around, you so guys, wait. Foot, this is, uh. De'Aaron, you don't have to say it. This is this is not big. So we, wait, I'm sure you've seen like clips of the podcast before, and you probably did. Did you think it was bigger? Did you feel um, like this room was going to be bigger? I, I think it was bigger, but it looked like a. Good studio. Uh, I don't okay. think oh, yeah. because y'all are much closer to the camera. Yeah. Than mm-hmm. yeah. 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 But like even like on this, it looks a good size. Like, yeah. So we fooled just... everyone until now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. I don't think that. It, I'm not saying it looks. <laughs> it looked big. It just looked like a good okay. size studio. Like, right, you, don't need, you don't need that much space for a studio. We always tell everyone that it's like a, a studio warehouse, you know, and that like it's just we have miles and miles of room, yeah, and so um, <laughs> oh, yeah, she's you guys caught up now. They they got us. They caught us. How do you guys first meet? You want the long story? Oh, short? Long story. How, what are you yeah. gonna give? He loves telling people we met in Vegas. Just because oh. it sounds so bad. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right away, Wait, it's, it's like, ooh, we like met in Vegas. It was summer <laughs> league. risque. Well, I mean, the summer league's in Vegas. He's not lying. Yeah, but he loves. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, sir. I was working. You were working, and that's <laughs> yes, <sir>. <laughs> <laughs> we're not on the strip. <laughs> like, so you guys didn't know each other before. She thought summer. that I knew her, but I didn't know. <laughs> Which is crazy because growing up, you know other hoopers. Yeah. But I'm two classes above him. Okay. I'm young though for my class. So I'm only one year older, but I'm two grades. And I you guess. were both in Texas, right? Yeah. Which is okay. why I was like, okay, you should yeah. know me. Yes, well, yes, yes. I knew like I knew like some of the girls in my class. Yeah. And then like the girls that I knew that were older, like played basketball in Houston. I didn't know anybody outside of that. Okay. Right. Okay. I've known Harry Giles since he was fifteen. Oof. Like right. USA basketball My stuff. I love HG. Brother, love him, right? He's great. So he was on the USA team, um, and I made it as well. So we were there in Colorado at the same time. Okay. So that's why I've known him for so long. So um, the Kings were staying at Manor and Oriental. Manor and Oriental. It's, uh, and it's Waldorf something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Restoria. Yeah. And something. I was working for the Wizards, and we were as well. And so Kings bus pulls up. I'm like, oh, Harry, right? Like, yeah. Harry. Yeah, my God. I'm this was, uh, for this I'm is going like into waiting. our second year. Okay. Right. okay. So I'm like waiting for him. And as I'm waiting, D walks by mm-hmm. and he doesn't remember. 
we lock eyes. I, I, I look away. <laughs> he looks down back at his phone. And I was like, wow, he didn't even say anything to me. It's kind of disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> so I DM'd him and I was like, so you're not going to say anything. Ooh. And he was like, I didn't even see you standing there. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> I, didn't, like I don't even know who you are, basically. And I was uh, like, well, f- <laughs> fine. <laughs> Whatever. Like, it's totally fine. So he continued the conversation. Oh. Yeah, which was nice. Mm-hmm. I took it like, okay, that's that's fine. Like, yeah. Continue the conversation. And then I ended up meeting up with him, and we talked for like what four hours before I went back to Cal. Mm, yeah, and then she had to drive back. She had to drive from Vegas to Berkeley. Damn. Yeah, back for school. Mm-hmm. And then it was convenient because I was only like an hour and fifteen minutes away. Wow. So we became like the best of friends. For re- like for real. No friends. Mm-hmm. Wait, you weren't e- so you guys weren't even like crushing on each other in that time, or like uh, it was. I mean, lightweight. Was, I thought she was pretty, but like yeah, I wasn't yeah, like was forcing pursuing, anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and my thing was, I'm working for an NBA team. This absolutely cannot happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Woman in sports. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you, you, that absolutely cannot happen. Yeah. So we became the best of friends. Like it was like boundaries here, boundaries there. Kinsey Forbes, um, one of my best friends, she is from Folsom. So we would go and visit her family. And Ugh. I would, D would come over to the house. He spent New Year's with us. Yeah. Um, at the apartment. I was living in Roseville at this time. Yeah. And I would just drive over to Folsom and, and we, see them. It was like me, her, Reno, and Dee were a group of friends. Like it was, we cultivated the best relationship. It was awesome. Oh. And then I didn't realize that we were beginning to be more than friends until I got cut from Seattle. No, 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 no. He drove to go watch my last game. We were in the tournament and we were playing Baylor the year they won the championship. Oof. Wait, that was you a good were team Cal too. At this I was time? with Cal. She's okay. a Cal. At, and we were they played at Baylor uh, second y'all played well first round and second round in yeah that place but they were in the second round and we were playing in Dallas the next day so he so I rented a car, car and, and, drove. and I drove to Waco oh that's that was a, yeah that's, that's so a move I don't remember how that game went so I don't know <laughs> I don't, was I don't yeah. remember <laughs> you don't I had, remember the, I had to drive anything. back and I got back to the hotel I won <laughs> uh, I think we played well we may have won I mean, this is my second year. We were pretty good that year. Yeah, I, I was mean, gonna say, and what you need to do sometimes for love. Hello, you ended and, up marrying And this her. was before All Star Break, so this is before we broke down that year. Oh, oh. <laughs> so we were good. We probably won that game. Yeah, definitely we won that game. Definitely, yeah. The the good luck charm. The lo- you were yeah. feeling good, feeling happy. So I was like, oh, he does like me, because it's not like he could have spent any time with me. He came literally just to watch me play. Yeah, I talked to her after the game. I, I met her him. parents that day, and oh. then and, then and then I had to go left. back to Dallas. Damn. No. And it was like a two hour drive, like uh, an like hour and a half. And yeah. that's when you knew you're like, okay. I was like, is... oh, he must like me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> be something. Does he like me? Yeah. So then when it clicked, like who w- Well, after now I'm taking, I was doing my master's online. Yeah. And then um, before I went back home to train with my father for my Seattle camp, I stayed with D. And I was like, okay. And then went to Seattle. Got cut, and he was like, "It's okay. You should just come home." And I'm like, "Home? Ooh. What does that mean?" <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and so I never even asked any yeah. questions. I just spent the summer with him, wow. and then I worked for University of Texas for as a head video coordinator yes. that year. And then I was like, "Listen, this is very important to me because women in sports. If I'm gonna be out in public with you, I need a commitment." I'm not doing this, right? Because I'm Job. giving up a lot. And at you, this point. you understood he that, understood huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. I, I did. no. That's Eventually. I mean, that's really that's honestly that's it. big of you because I I mean you you're young too at yeah. that time. I mean you're still young, but like right. you're young in I a mean, relationship. I mean, I was twenty. Yeah, he, wow. a little much different now. Like oh, much. He's a, I feel he's a 180. Like, I feel like, yeah, I feel like the young De'Aaron, like, is because it's crazy. Like, we remember you talking to you as a rookie, a little cocky. De'Aaron had right. a little, yeah, don't you think he, he had a little, I like seeing stuff. I'm like, damn, he, I'm not well, well, like that. No, anymore. you are not, you're not mean. It's, that's no, not no, no, an no, insult. No. I just, you know, it's, it's just this young, I'm in the NBA. But oh, for sure. I feel like, yeah. yeah. And it's funny, too, because now, like, we've, we've seen you from the start of your career here in Sacramento. We've been covering Sacramento. And I feel like I like know you, but I don't know you. And that's why I was so glad that you were even coming today too, because I'm like, it has been so many years. And this last year for you guys, I mean, obviously everything, not only on the floor, but just uh, marriage, yeah, babies, yeah, just life in general, all the above. 
I mean, what, what was this last year? What did it mean to you? It was like perfect. It was great. I mean, got married, had a baby. We broke the drought, made first all-star, made all NBA. It's like everything was kind of just falling into place. So, like, how does it even get better now? <laughs> we go further. Yeah, yeah. We go have further another playoffs. baby. We get married again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just keep building. We keep building in life together. And I feel like as my life got more steady and my game grew as well. So, yeah, it's all just been hand in hand for me. Probably not for everybody. It's not hand in hand like that. Sure. But <clears throat> what were you going to say? I think that's the underrated part that people don't understand. Like... Your stability and you create a routine and you're focused. It's like sometimes it just takes like a partner to help you do that. Yeah. And like to help you mature and do all of that. And I don't know. I try to preach to one of our best friends on the team. He'll get it one day. But like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, it's you're gonna flourish. It, it it's a it's a natural it, it helps more than you think. It helps way more. Uh, like someone to get on your ass to go to sleep. A true team a like, true teammate yes. off the oh, floor, she's... right? She's on everybody's ass on the team. No, everybody. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> everybody. You're I gonna. You're going it, to hear it. Because really? I just want what's best for y'all. <laughs> yeah. Like me and Malik, I told Malik, like I'm your. I I've asked year and year, and I've talked about it. I am like your best friends. Like I am your second wife. Yeah. Like, I'm going to text you and make sure that you go to the gym. Like <laughs> it is a real <laughs> thing. What did you eat today? Are you coming to team workouts? Like, what is going on with you? And uh, he takes it you be because paid. he's coming yeah. out of love. Well, okay. I mean, they should definitely paid. probably put her on <laughs> the payroll. I mean, are you kidding? Yeah. Coming out of love. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's only for you, right? Obviously for the team as well. But it's like, I want to see you do well. I feel like you need those people in your life. Um, how much of that is like also your love for the game? Like you could because you know what it takes. It's not easy to be a D one yeah. athlete and then right. to try to get to the WNBA and to go through all that process. I mean, you played at an extremely high level. How much of it is because of your like you know passion? What it is to me. Yeah, it's I was never the most talented. Mm. Right, like, mm. but you knew what you could got, offer. Yes, and my sister got all the athletic genes. Right, like Ugh. she came out the womb with the six pack. Like, <laughs> so she's annoying. She's always been so quick. Like, yes. no, I never had that. But I always had to work for everything that I had. Like, whether it came from IQ, from film, waking up at five forty-five as a nine-year-old to go work out before school. Like, yeah, they were I always, one. yeah. Well, I had to do that to be elite. I never had. I'm not fast really slow <laughs> I don't jump very well right yeah. and so I've always had to work for everything so when I see like Malik who was the most talented person we've ever seen on a basketball court and I'm like you you don't know how good you can be mm-hmm. and that's how with, I was with him like you don't get it that's what I was so t- talking about that about the partnership and like right. you know you coming into De'Aaron's life what's really cool about all of this De'Aaron is that you you recognize it and like you're aware of it and you love celebrating it. And I think that's not only is that so cool to celebrate like women as like a partner, but like a a woman who is really into sports and has been into sports and it's like only made you better. Yeah. I mean, we're a team on and off the court, like in and outside of the house. Yeah. Um, like any deal or anything that's going on, they're calling her. <laughs> Like, my agents talk to her as well. Like, everybody, if for the most part, whatever we do, you're going to have a group message with me and her. Because you're not going to just text me. You're not going to just text her. Like, we both always know what's going on. So, like, I mean, what a a guy. Plus, half the time, if you text us in the group, I'm probably not even looking at it. Yeah, Yeah. And she knows, and then she'll tell me. So, it's like, we always, in life and whatever we're doing, we're always, we always want to be on the same page. And I was, I tell him, like, how secure you have to be to allow that to happen. That's it. That's the biggest thing. And when, when that's funny. It's Whenever she said that, I'm like, I didn't know that people weren't like that. No, it's there's, very uncommon. There's a lot, lot of men even older that are so insecure as we, I mean, I'm sure we all know that like <laughs> that. And it just, it shines through when they belittle or talk down or don't treat people as equals. And like, there's, there's a way you can go about, about talking to one another, but also like you guys having that partnership, you know, you work together, you do everything together. And it's funny with us, like doing NBC and podcasting and everything, 
he's always on my ass when it comes to like he'll watch like an NBC thing and he'll be like, <laughs> so why didn't you naturally and confidently go into that? You know, like yeah. it's always just and this feedback, that. and I need it, and I love it, and I yeah. appreciate it because it only makes me better. And then he's doing it for the love to make sure that you are who you need to be. Like that's a true teammate, right? Right, and like that's that's one hundred percent, and it makes it just easier for both of us, I right? Think. And then everyone's winning. So, I'm sure you give him feedback all the time. Like when you watched your play, I know it was in the early oh, days. He's brutal. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> why I want to know. Wait, wait, for what? When I watched her play, yeah, yeah. yeah would yeah, you give yeah. her oh. feedback? What would you say to her? Like, what yeah, was your breakdown? Brutal. He's got a lot of like triple Ooh. singles and. <laughs> oh, I was. Oh, like what was the what was the worst part about her game that you'd get on? Um, worst. I think not shooting the ball enough. Mm. Which I understand that wasn't my role. Okay, like. You have different roles, right? Like, I've been to three different colleges. Yeah, so but she's a 40% three-point shooter. So I'm like, you should probably have shot this mm -hmm. shot. Let it fly. Okay. Like, so And then you throw it in there, someone misses, they're going back on the other end. I'm like, and I told her this. I'm like, sometimes I'd rather miss than watch somebody else miss. Mm. So listen, I put it that way. That's yeah. Fair. I had to mature and realize, like, different teams need different roles out of you, right? Yeah. So when I went to Texas Tech... We weren't the best team. I had to shoulder a lot of the stuff, right? It was scoring through double teams. It was whatever as a guard. And the Big 12 has had the best defense in the country, like, out for a very long time. Yeah. I was going against Brooke McCarty, Ariel Atkins, um, uh, Bria Taylor. Like, it was – I it was knew tough. what it took, yeah. right? Every night. And so whenever I transferred, um, I had never been to the tournament before. Yeah. So I'm like looking and I've always had a really good relationship with Lindsey Gottlieb, Charmin and Kai. And uh, he might as well be blood to me. Wendell Farrell, who's now at USC, was an assistant at Cal when I was there. But I met him at UCLA my freshman year when I oh went. Gosh. So everything kind of connected. The Man. basketball world too. Yeah. Right. And plus, I knew I wanted to work for the Warriors. So I'm like, I'm going there because <laughs> Lindsey can get me a job mm. there. So um, we had the best player in the country. Like Christina Nigue. Led what was she like average twenty and something? She was averaging like twenty and Monster thirteen. Numbers. It was crazy. So you could be a facilitator. It was a facilitator, and that's what I really did well. I'm a really good leader. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I can pass like when it comes to that type of stuff. So I'm like, I get a six four big in there that I just throw it up and she go get it. Please, right? Pick and roll a lot of the time. Like later on, yeah, you had to honor my mid at this point because mm -hmm. two are going with her and. Oof. So that was, I was trying to explain to De'Aaron, I've never played with <laughs> someone like this. Like, Let me work We all enjoy this. good teammates, but you gotta get yours at so. times you gotta, you gotta <laughs> shoot it. And like we had an older <laughs> offense, we were running high-low. Oh. And it's so funny because Lindsay ended up going to the Cavs the year after. So yeah. now she's playing more like an NBA and, style. And of course. And, and she was yeah. like, Brisse, I just wish I would have gone to the Cavs before we had our group. Because we had four lethal shooters and then mm -hmm. Christine... If we would have opened it up, and she's already said it, like mm. we would have opened it up, and you could have had a lot more. <laughs> it, was just, yeah. it was just, yeah, no, but um. So that was that was your feedback of her. What was what's your what's the most irritating thing about his game? Sometimes free throws. Ooh. You got better at that this year, though. Yeah, for high. but what's NBA? Yeah, it was at eighty for a minute, though. It was. I yeah. went through a tough stretch. Yeah, you know, I actually went through a really bad stretch this year. Um was what December I think it was like December I it was like November. November something like that where I, my foot was hurt it was November and I because we're in Milwaukee because it was right before in the Boston. stretch of games that I didn't play oh, in yeah. Cleveland and New York okay yeah. and, games. and in Boston we and struggled. I'm yeah I'm like my my foot is yeah. like my foot hurts so I'm like can I play yes but I'm gonna play like the way I, the way I've been playing the last two weeks I'm like I've been bad the last he two weeks he was battling through it for like two and a half weeks and he wanted to keep playing. And I was like, listen, we're good enough right now to where Davion can stay the ship, get healthy, and then we'll see how it goes. So when he finally told Mike the truth, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mike was like, yes, sit out. Yeah, like, yeah. please. But Let's big be big picture and here. And it's hard for me because I know, I know what's going on with his body, but I have to stay in my role. Yeah. Right? Even good though job. I have a good relationship with everyone, yep. I could easily text and be like, hey, this he's hurting. <laughs> it's funny because we were playing in Atlanta. Um, we played in Memphis. That was the yeah, ugliest game. Right before, right yes. before Thanksgiving, actually. Oh, my actually. gosh. Right before uh, yeah, Atlanta-Boston. Yeah. And two games. Aaron Holiday's guarding me. 
he's like, and I did something. He's like, yo, why haven't you been doing that the whole game? I'm like, bro, I can't move. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, I can't, like, I'm like, I literally can't explode going left right now. So like, I just can't. I, I think it's interesting because one thing that's being talked about about the Kings right now is Hit like, it. Look, I know exactly what you're saying. Look, <laughs> th- they were the healthiest team in the league last year. And I always I go, I was look, wishing you made this point. Guys, guys are playing through stuff. Sabonis, Keegan, of course, you. I'm sure there are others. Like, yeah. I think that's kind of an underrated part. It's like, I know Sabonis played, and you like take it for granted that like he got hurt before Christmas and he kept playing. He was hurt, and yeah. it was it's not like he got better in the playoffs. I don't think he got better in the playoffs. I don't like, think he got better or worse. I yeah, think, I mean, it's still going to affect you in some way. Yeah, it's it was. We had guys that had, it's Mike's culture. Now you didn't. Besides, I, Domas did break something, but besides that, yeah. no one broke anything. But like calf strain, your hamstring, like you don't play with those type of injuries. Yeah. But guys are like. We are on such a roll. We're playing so well. We don't want to try to change that up. And mm. guys play through injuries the entire yeah. season. There, yeah. sometimes you probably shouldn't play. And there's gonna uh, be Trey. Trey hurts something. Yes. I'm like, bro. And like Trey's besides Malik, Trey's probably my best friend on the team. I'm like, dog, sit the fuck down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, you need to sit yeah. down. And he's like, nah, bro. Because if I sit, I don't know if I'm gonna play. When I come back, like oh. rotations change if you're not playing. So he's like, so I'm like, okay, I, I understand you, but I'm like, bro, you need to. It's like, Mike's you don't culture. Need to play. Like, I love that mindset. Like, yes. I, you know why I appreciate that mindset? Because that's how it used to be back in the day, whether it was like high school or like not so much AAU. I feel like that's a whole different culture, but like even college ball, like where you're like, people are trying to fight. It's more yeah, than we're people all fighting fight. for everybody. Yes. Obviously, we're a team. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you want to feed your family, you want to play as much as you possibly can. And I mean, that aspect creeps in, of course. That's natural. And you keep saying Mike's culture. Is it because like he he makes people want to push through it in a good way, kind of thing? Or are you just saying like uh, what is it about Mike's culture? Yeah, like you have a job. Yeah, you yeah. have a job to do. Do yes. your job, right? And he approaches the day. That's the best letter that we could have asked for. Yeah, because every day that he he's very militant. He came from a military background, and so he approaches the day like a professional. So everybody else. Follows his lead. Everybody just, everybody mm, just, just falls right in, line. in line. That is, and that. he's so tough. He would not do well with the soft player. Mm. Yeah. 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 Really, well, I think you may quit. <laughs> the one thing <laughs> he <laughs> said, <laughs> though, I thought that was important. Is he said he said this a lot during the year? Is like because he could coach you and Sabone as hard, yes. and you guys could take it. It allowed him to be able to get the respect from everyone else. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it? Was that an adjustment at first? Like, oh. or were you like, it, I felt, okay, I, you know what? Let me, before you answer, Ooh. I remember your end of season press conference the year before Mike Brown, uh, or the month, months before Mike Brown got hired. Yes, I know what you're saying. And I told say. more than this, I'm like, you know what, man? I'm listening to De'Aaron. He wants structure. He wants, like, after all these years of the roller coaster ride in Sacramento, like, he wants some structure, some discipline, some accountability. Yeah. And I feel like you, Got exactly what you wanted. Got exactly what, what I wanted. Um, I mean, like growing up, I had coaches that would get like, like this. Notice, I love Luke, but he's he's more laid back. Chill. Probably needs like an older team, yeah. guys who have been there, done that. And Dave, Dave yelled. He gotten, but not as much. Like Mike's like this all the time. Like, if I that, mean, my favorite thing is the timeouts. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh, I live it for is. those. Those quick timeouts. <laughs> Forty <laughs> seconds in, timeout. I think the quickest one was at Cleveland, the game I didn't play. They scored on the first possession. Actually, we got the ball first, then they got it. Scored on the very first possession, and called timeout. I'm like, if we would have lost the tip, that would have been the quickest timeout ever. Because there. fix it before it goes down, yes. and I live life like that. Yep. Like if we have a breakdown in communication. We're going to sit there and we're going to talk about it until we can figure it out because it's not going to build up. Because then you let one turnover go, then you let another turnover, or a mishap, one, one break. Every ball. possession no. matters in the NBA. Yes. Like, it's yeah. so important. And it's, you know, you are so, now. so right. And it's, I think sometimes what people will try and analyze and be weird about, they'll be like, not every player is going to like that or not every team's going to like and that. That's or, true, though. And it is true, yeah. but it's like, this fucking team likes it. They they buy in. But they and you're go also going to bring in guys who are okay with it because you That's, want to be coached. Yes. Like, with what accountability? It, right. <laughs> well, you yes. know how it is what in the league. I mean, about? some guys get. <laughs> then don't come. Some guys feel I, embarrassed, right? Like they get embarrassed by. They feel like they're getting called out. 
I mean, that's just, I mean, you, you've been around the league to know like that that's going to happen. But what I love what like Mike style. did is like, to me, when you're trying to change a culture where there's been losing for years, got to be years even more years, militant about yes. it. It's like, no, we're changing this and we're changing it. Like it, the old Kings, that's done. Like we're going to stop talking about this. So was that easy for you immediately to buy in then? Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, like my whole life I played for coaches that would get on you for every, for almost every little thing. Okay. Like playing for Cal. Yeah. Cal will break you if you can't Literally. take it. Cal will, <laughs> Cal will break you. Like, so we had me, Malik, Bam, and Isaiah Briscoe and uh, Winyan Gabriel. But it's like, when he would yell at you, he wants to see the fire. Like, he don't want you to pull your head down. Like, he's to a point testing you. If yeah. he's yelling at you, obviously he still wants you to do well. But as soon as your head drops, he's like, oh, shit. So he doesn't, he doesn't like that, and we love that about Cal. He wasn't going to let us get away with anything. Obviously, he probably wasn't going to pull us out, and if he did, he'd take you out for a minute or two, go back in the game, don't do the same thing. And I love that. So whenever we got Mike, and that's the way he was from the first day of training camp, I'm like, okay, this is going to be different. And obviously, the talent was a lot yeah. better in the, in, the, in the arena, but we'd probably I don't know if we do that with, without Mike. I can't say that we do that without Mike, even with this same team. That's that's interesting because that's I, I definitely see it from that perspective. And I think I think there's a lot of basketball people that can understand that in the the importance of a of a coach. Right. And I think sometimes when people just look at this league and they go, you have to have talent, you have to have talent. What are you going to do with talent if you don't have it playing to together? a certain extent right. like, to a I, certain extent? Yes, yeah. yes. But but even like with with you guys, it's. It's like you guys are on the rise, like as you become an all star, Sabonis, another all star. And I think when you look around the league, sometimes people are like, you need to have a team with this many all stars, or this many superstars. And you you see how that's not necessarily how it works. Like, look at the team that just won the championship last that year. Was like the Continuity most and great players. Built but team yeah. yes. like ever assembled. Like, but, obviously, you have the Warriors, and the talent level is, I mean, that's the most talented team ever. But as far as a roster that was like, Put together, I feel like that was like the perfect roster. They it buy was. into Michael Malone. Mm -hmm. They they kept growing together. And that's, I guess I'm getting to that point too, is like with Mike Brown, I feel like seeing you guys bringing it back and building off of this like continuity and the chemistry that you can have this season. I think they're, in my opinion, that that's very important. But how do you see it in yeah, the NBA? Funny. I've talked about it somewhere. I don't remember where I was, but I feel like, us making the playoffs, losing to Golden State, like gaining that experience is bigger than if we brought in, just brought in different players. Yeah. Because now everybody knows what it's like. Everybody knows how physical it is. Everybody knows that every, like Mike talks about it, every single play matters. In the regular season, it's probably not, it's not that important. Like you can get away with certain stuff. But in the playoffs where everything is so micro-focused that every little thing matters. And I think, Especially the guys that, like, obviously HB's been in finals before and Kev's been in um, in the Eastern Conference finals before. But besides those two, nobody else had played in games like that. So I think just gaining that experience, I feel like, made us better. And I think it kind of – and we're better defensively in the playoffs. Um, yep. So I think just seeing what it was like and being able to feel that, I feel like, makes us better. Yeah, the defense is just so weird to me because I always had this number. <laughs> because you guys were eighth in defensive rating on the road. Yeah. And like I think it was like 29th at home or yeah. something or 27th at home. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. I, I like I feel like you guys are capable, even if you don't have a whole bunch of lockdown defenders, you need a good team defense. And obviously I mean, even if Denver's a good defensive team, I mean but they were Aaron Gordon, middle of the pack. Aaron Gordon, KCP, and Bruce Brown. Nobody yeah. else on the team was like Yeah. 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 No, it's true. The the IQ. Like, I mean, I don't I mean, Rase, you kind of talked about this earlier it's like you didn't rely on your athleticism and um your height or whatever while you're playing right. but you understand the importance of the iq and because you're around it all the time like are you seeing the difference in this team and the way that they're playing like just having monty bringing in smart players to put around dr one thousand percent yes and i think it goes back to the accountability of mike where he snatches people like he'll do the timeout and then he'll physically bring kev 
De'Aaron or Malik to the spot where, hey, you need to get outside the box, <laughs> right? And I know exactly what he's <laughs> The geometry of the floor. Get that one extra step yes. just out, just one step quicker. Yes. Or if you, get were, outside if you were in a stance, you would have got there because you wouldn't have to get down mm, and run. Yeah. And, and so I think it's habits also. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're smart, but if you don't have the habits to get there, like on the flight of the ball, you should be jumping. It shouldn't be you see it, then you run. Now you're late. Now you're like, you can't take a hit. Like Mike wants you to take a hit outside the box. So I think it's the habits along with the mental IQ to be able to be a, a good defender. Yeah, we drill right? everything. I'm telling you. It's over and over. <laughs> and over and over. <laughs> so, I mean, you t- I mean, you obviously got some experience coaching and, then, and being with the Warriors in the developmental side. Do you want to get into coaching at some point? Like, is that something? Cause just hearing you talk. Oh, you my God. Tell, you, coach per se, say co- it works. <laughs> like, do you want to, like, do that at some point? I used to. Yeah. And I think it's funny because, what was it, three years ago or two years ago when Luke was here, Luke Wong offered me a job, like, three times. Oh, yeah. Oh. And so, like, I'm looking at D, and, I'm, and he's like, well, your hours are going to have to be there later than I am. And you go in earlier, Coaching's and we want to build a family. Yeah. yeah, and it's just a lot, right? Yeah. Coaches are there coaches, coaches all are day. I mean, it's your life all yeah. day. It's your life, life. especially and if you know game what? day. Okay, no, yes, go, ahead. go, on, go ahead. I was say game day, like they're there before everybody, and then most of the time they're not going home before the game. Like we have shoot around, we go home, and then come back. They're there all day. And then they stay after games sometimes. Watching watch. film yeah. of the game because they have to have the film session ready for the 10 o'clock practice. That's insane. Oh, it's I a mean, lot. even back to back, now you have your scout. Oh. Like, it's a big, it was, so my <laughs> thing was, it was the best whenever I was single and I was with the Warriors. Mm. I had no time to think about anything else. Yeah. Right. It was yeah. amazing. That was your life. I told Deere and that is the happiest time of my <laughs> life. Yeah. Ever was being, I mean, you're just consumed in it. It's like a hoop hedge dream. Yes. There's no way I could do it now. Like, okay. there's no way. Okay. Like, D's done. I still don't think I would do it just because now we have Rainy. We want two more. And it's like, let's go make him. We want him to play tennis, by the way. Oh. We want to make him like a tennis goat. Think tennis Please. Goat. Please. Oh, okay. <laughs> we almost went to the U.S. Open. Oh, no we're about way. To go. We you're going to bring workouts. him? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, he needs to learn yeah. now. So we're indoctrinating him. I'm total into brainwash. <laughs> we don't watch TV in our house unless it's tennis. Literally on what the are, tennis channel all day. That's hilarious. Our room, the living room, sounds kind of relaxing. It's, it's cool. Like, he like, we can have like a different show up or a different or like a movie or something. Yeah, and he'll like look and then he'll go back to playing with it, like whatever he's messing with. If tennis is on, like he'll he's sit there. In. And, Whoa, he's locked in. Because right. ever since we were born, he was born, I just put it on the TV. So, like, he'll get up in the middle of the night. He's also a different baby, man. I mean, yeah. he's just, <laughs> he has Jaren's genes. I don't know how to explain it. You yeah, know how, what? like, pros are just wired a little differently? Uh-huh. Like, he's just, he's, he's just mentally, he's just a different guy. Rainy has some of that in him. Already? Wait, how old is he? He'll be seven, seven what's today, the 31st? <laughs> uh, first. I, and I feel like he was, like, One day. three days. He, three days. I feel like he was at a Kings game like two days after oh, being yeah, born. Like, yeah. You wasted no time. You brought Wait. right out. Put the headphones on. <laughs> yeah. and that, let's go. You're act, you're getting acclimated into our life. We, We're not. We are He's not. Big on that. We didn't talk about that enough because even like I like sure, Rain, good job being there. Rissé, how did you bring like that sounds like so much work, so difficult, so hard. Yeah. Like you did it all and you did it right after birth. I mean, what are you, just Superwoman? <laughs> like, you just do it. I don't know yeah. And then my mom came in, and <sighs> De'Aaron has said it so many times, but she was our MVP for the rest of the season. Really? And, like, shout out to my dad, because he's in San Antonio doing grassroots basketball, helping go- girls get in college, right? Stop. So he's like, no, Alba, you need to leave and go help Rissé and De'Aaron, because we plan to have rain during All-Star break, and that didn't happen. Mm. <laughs> so, like, was, we... He was yeah. three weeks early. Yeah, wow. Three weeks early. Three weeks early. You, you, were, you were close. Long, long, long. Oh, my God. I, I've seen only photos of him He's and, long. like, his legs. Like, oh, yeah. his <laughs> feet. Are tennis players, like, really long? Oh, uh, you have... <laughs> You have some. I feel like you had an event. But for the most part, I feel like the best ones are usually between like six foot and six four. Yeah. Oh, good. You guys so, are on the right, the right page. So we're right there. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you just, my mom held it down for us. I mm. was like, she That's was, huge. Having a village is amazing. My sister was pregnant. 
at that time too. And she would come up and drive up because she lives in San Jose with her yeah. her man. He plays for the 49ers. Oh, in yeah. San Jose. Yeah. 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 Easy. And so she would come up and she's like, what do you need? That's so big. Her I was curious Tally. about that because yeah. I'm like a newborn in the middle of an NBA yes. season. Yes. Like yes. that Hard. is tough. Like how do you yeah. balance all that? I would say though, but like. He started playing the best basketball of his life after that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's right. It just happened so perfectly. Like yeah. her water broke in Houston. So at the airport, oh, at the hometown. Airport. And, and yeah, wait, yeah. where did you where did you want to have him? Was there? We so wanted cool. to have him here. Okay. Um, okay. It's a whole story. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say, besides having him here, yeah. it couldn't have happened at a better time. Okay. Like we're in Houston for four days because I landed in, in we landed in Indiana. She had texted me when we were on the plane, so <laughs> I had to get my flight from Indiana to back to Houston. And there's like we went two from games in Houston or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Because we went from San Antonio to Indiana. I, I didn't leave the airport. I had to get on a flight to fly to Houston. And obviously, we played in um, Indy. Then we played in New Orleans, and then we came to Houston. Oh. So I'm like, well, I'll miss these last these two well, games. Well, he had to miss. Houston. And this is the whole thing where, obviously, I see Twitter, right? And I'm on. Twitter. <laughs> oh, we know. And oh, so I remember. Yeah, I love remember your that. energy. This was just where like regular like the fans of the team don't know. Mm-hmm. So, I land in Houston. I'm connecting to um, Indiana. Mm-hmm. My water breaks. Mm-hmm. Don't know my water breaks. So I'm like, is that? Did I pee? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I'm in the in, in the airport, and it's just like, oh, okay. So my water's broken. So, but <laughs> D's manager, which is his high school uh, coach, I call him. He comes picks me up. He's at Lifetime playing. Picks me up. He's in his bins, and I'm like, I will replace your seat. I'm so sorry. <laughs> because you just oh. can't help it. Like, so I yeah. was like, I was planning to do a home birth, right? So I'm like, I'm flying my doula up. You need to come here now. Whatever. Didn't do the home birth. I am. T- I was like, I don't sorry. get an award for this. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm going to the hospital, and I'm doing medicine. Like, yeah. I don't care about toughness through this. No, I need help. I, I can tell you when I need help. Yeah. So... Um, I, my body rejected the Pitocin that they gave me. No. To like speed up the contraction. Yes. So I could have rain. So they would take me down and I would dilate. And then the doctor would be like, okay, let's see if we could push. No, my body would shut back down. Oh so God. I'm in labor for 22 20, hours. Yeah. Oh, oh, you had plenty of time oh, to he get stopped, your ass there. He to get canes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he lands. He's like, babe, I'm so well, hungry. I'm like, I've been in the airport all day. Yeah, I'm, yeah. In a, yeah, I'm like, so, I gotta eat. Something. So I was like, stop. It's fine. Be your the only self. thing is, is he was eating in front, like in the <laughs> room. <laughs> and you know, we can't eat anything. Nope. So De'Aaron, whenever the doctor would leave, he would sneak me applesauce <laughs> and like a nut of butter. Because I, I told him like, this is a workout. I need calories. Yeah. Like, this is crazy. I am burning. And it used to piss me off because she's like, you want some ice chips? And I said, can you stop ice calling chips? them chips? It's ice. Ice. You want ice. It's ice. There is no uh, chip in there. Would you like uh, some ice candy? Food. It's crazy. Yeah. So I end up having rainy the next day, 22 oh, hours later. The next morning. And then... The doctor had to hold me because I had risk of infection because of like the water breaking for two okay. whatever hours. So I have to stay there for an extra 48 hours. So now we're in the hospital for like three and a half days. So he couldn't, first of all, Darren's not leaving me in the hospital alone. No. So of course he misses the New Orleans game. So now it's, Darren had his baby, why is he missing so oh, many games and so whatever, weird. whatever it is. And so I'm like, y'all don't even understand that we're still humans. Like, yeah, you, you have a job. Oh, I'm five. sleeping on the little couch. Yeah, the little ottoman. <laughs> thing is. Yeah, this his legs, like his knee. It was so small. I felt so bad. I'm like worried about his back. <laughs> and he's like, "It's okay. You just pushed out a human being. Like yeah, we're good. He, he's fine." No, so that was the whole thing. It was like he Darren wanted to be there. Obviously, he's not going to leave his wife in the hospital. You don't need to even risk it's, of infection. What it's is funny. Wrong with it, you guys? Yeah, it's social media is funny too because it, it's crazy what gets caught. Like I mean, I do the same thing where like someone says something messed up and. It's one, per- like you it's have one to, person, yeah. but God, it, right. it gets the, at you. The thing that bothered me the most, too, is that, like, I was like, what if there was complications? What if there was something yeah. else that right. was not going right in their life? And everyone's concerned about this, right? Yeah. About the air and playing? It's one game. It's, it's almost, yeah. Like they, it's Some people just don't treat you like you're human. Like, yeah. human, the, human things happen. 
Yeah. The mind just goes somewhere else. And I'm like, I'm sorry that you have to deal with that. But also, I'm so glad that he has you to be like, oh, no, no, we're going to clap back. (laughs) Yeah, no. Yeah, do you think in some ways that's... The good thing about social media is you can show the human side and clap back and like yeah, but then the next thing is oh you're so sensitive and you're uh, so this you're so that yeah, damn it's you like damn wow if you say something and I'm a basketball player and yeah. I say something back now all basketball players are sensitive and it's I mean it is what it is like, I yeah. don't don't care but yeah, yeah yeah that's like the comeback like right. there's no real comeback it's, yeah you're sensitive and yeah, that, you're always gonna that. lose you, but <sighs> sometimes you got to get it off like sometimes you're like, you see it and you're like, oh, I'll Because you're something. human and you yeah. want to express yourself yeah. and sometimes yeah. share your emotions, too. I just too. think sometimes people need to be checked. Yeah. Like, I'm with you. Yeah. Like, no, Deuce is definitely with you. Know, I'm the one that, like, I don't... I, when people are so Your comebacks mean, are awesome. I love <laughs> it. I'm, glad, I'm glad you I got to go at people sometimes, yeah. No, I'm glad you check people because you get behind a keyboard... And you just get the you biggest just feel balls. Like, yeah. You get the biggest balls. You would yeah. never say that to. I just tell myself that yes. they're really like hurt, hurt, hurt that. people that like <laughs> have no idea what like real life is, and or are just like like you said, hiding behind this keyboard, and they're like a lonely person. And like I like my life. I have a roof over my head. I enjoy things. And so then my soul just goes to. I really feel bad for them. So like I'm not gonna be mean back. Where he's just like da 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 da. I'd be like sometimes you gotta get. <laughs> confrontation you yeah. need it yeah. you got it and some it. and you know sometimes there's people that you go out and then they say sorry at the end or, yeah hey, i didn't mean it that way it's like thank you i'm glad you acknowledged like mm. good very forgiving yeah uh, i'm cool with that <laughs> um i want to go back to your experience with the warriors too because you're you're around all those great players but mike brown was on the staff luke laux is on the staff, staff which is just kind of a weird like so cool. full circle Crazy what the happened. hell Crazy that both happened. of these guys end up coming to Sacramento and you were close with Luke, right? Like, and I feel like he's met a ton of De'Aaron's career. I mean, oh, oh, your guys' honeymoon. He was there working out. He was with you guys this past year on vacation. Like what did Mike Brown and Luke Lyles mean for you? Funny story. So, um, my first day on the job did onboarding, whatever. Second day I'm down in, so I was able to do both. I was PD player development on the court at all times. And then front office too, wow. and so I was I was in charge of like going to uh, Bob Myers's boards, the draft boards, the yeah. playoff boards, the players boards, the free agents, and so I was cool. like in his office. It overlooks. It used to. They moved. This is when they were in Oakland. Yeah. Okay. But it overlooked, and I'm like, I'm gonna be here one day. But whatever. So we <laughs> end up. <laughs> so so cool. we end up going onto the court, and you see the guys, right? Like, Kay was there, Clay, Steph, like incredible team and it's just the people you watch growing up yeah right? but i it was normal it was weird i was like okay that's just them right because i look at these guys like humans it's it's fine yes but for some reason steve kerr and mike brown were bigger than life to me <laughs> yeah. like it was i like like mike said hi what's your name like whatever and i was like i texted and i was like is that mike brown <laughs> How fucking cool was yeah. that? <laughs> or like Steve was like, Rasay, how are you? How's season? I'm wow. like, Steve Kerr knows my name. And it's because I like reflected and it's because my dad and I would sit and watch games and then we would study plays. Like mm. we would study like their Like actually clipboard. talk about it, yeah. That's right? cool. And so it's, it was, that was the reason they were bigger than life to me because I probably wanted to be them more than a Steph. I yeah. didn't want to be Steph. I pattern, I tried to pattern my game after Steph, but whatever, that didn't work out. I tried to be <laughs> Steve Kerr and Mike Brown. So I think that's why I was like, oh my gosh, like this is, that's what I fangirled over. It wasn't about the million dollar players, about Steve and It was Mike. the respect I mean, the for like basketball coaches. minds. That's what it is. And it's she was a mind. coach's kid as well. So it's like. Yep. Right. So that was an incredible experience, just getting to be around them. And then Luke was my boss. Wow. And so what? best boss ever too, because he knew <laughs> how demanding it was. Like, yeah. We were waking up at. 6 30 be at the gym by like 7 15 because damian lee's coming in for his 8 a.m workouts and then i'm there from 8 to 1 ish i have cal film at 2 <laughs> practice from like 2 to 6 then i'm in a master's program about at to say, while Berkeley. being in a medicine Whoa. program so at 6 i like clockwork i'm crying at 6 o'clock <laughs> because i'm in a doctor's class that's the only master's that was open no business wasn't open it was uh public health but I'm in discussions with nurses and doctors. Like people who are actually trying to become doctors. And my breaking point was administering doses of 
anti venom. Mm -mm. oh. And I'm like, I will never use this in my life. <laughs> like, is me You're saying crazy. I graduated from Cal really that much worth it? To yeah. Where yeah. I'm like, I do not know what's going on. And yeah, so then I tried to do my homework, whatever. And then I'd watch basketball, a little bit of Grey's Anatomy, oh. and then get up and do the next day. What a vibe. The grind. So, and Luke's like always clockwork. checking on me, like, hey, how are you doing? Are you going on the road? Then he's checking on how I'm playing. And it was awesome because my dad taught me all my PD growing up because he only trained me. Yeah. And then I furthered my education with Luke. See. So when Mike calls De'Aaron and is like, hey, I'm going to send mm -hmm. my guy uh, Luke Laux down, I was like, what did he just say? Whoa. And then he was like, Luke Laux? And I was like, I like type in my Instagram. I'm like, that Luke. that's Luke. That's <laughs> my Luke. Like, that that's is my wild. Luke. That's and how you like, figured it out? Send him tomorrow. Now. Yeah. So he came the next day. Yeah, we were in San Diego, and he came. He got hired, and he was in San Diego the next day. How, was it easy for you? I mean, by the way, Luke is just, like, the <clears throat> sweetest guy. Like, it just getting to – it's it's so cool with this coaching staff getting to to say hi and know each one just a little right. bit more, right, right. Than, than past – coaching staffs but with luke he's outgoing he's great oh yeah so true, was it a true, a true floridian <laughs> i mean is. yeah that's it, the vibes did was it so easy for you to connect on all different levels yeah i mean luke played he played at florida state um him and Didi. so it's like they've played like they didn't play in the nba but they played overseas they played mm -hmm. major division one basketball so it was extremely easy plus his personality i mean luke's yeah. super outgoing the first day he came i'm like all right you got the workout he was like, I'm just going to be a fly on the wall. I said, no, nah, you got it. You're, you're going to run the Dear workouts now. was like, run the workout. So I'm not the playing workouts with you. Now, so. <laughs> run my workout. Yeah, we, we hit it off. Plus, obviously, him and Say knew each other. So, like, that was already there. <clears throat> and it was easy. It They're was, close. Truthfully, it was, yeah, it was It's like, it was I'm the third wheel. That's I wasn't hilarious. expecting that, to be honest. Yeah, we love his wife. Love the kids. Like, the kids come over. Like we'll be like, we'll be like, y'all have a date night. Yeah, we'll take yeah. the we'll take the kids yeah. for however many hours. I love that connection. Stuff was just so natural. Because yeah, it's, you've been with us the whole summer, and just come. This stuff, it really is. I think again, pulling back the curtain, is so important having with a team. It doesn't matter if it's the NBA level. Doesn't matter if it's called, wherever the level is of basketball. Like it is just great to have that connection with the people that you want to call, you work with, you play with, whatever. I would say it's needed, mm -hmm. right? Because I depend on Luke to tell De'Aaron the truth, Yeah. right? I need you to get on his ass so I don't have to do it when he gets home, right? Like, Amazing. it's a real... Yep. You can do that when you have a connection with I was someone. Say, yeah, plus you don't, know, you don't take it the wrong way. Yes, yeah. You need to know they love you. Yeah. That yeah. is intent. necessary, yeah. right? And so he's able to tell De'Aaron, like, Hey, that was bullshit. Like that yeah. day was terrible. But why? Because he's with he's with him. He he loves on him. We spend time together. We it's a real connection to where you know Luke only wants what's best for you, right? Which then helps the team and yeah. the organization. Helps Luke also, obviously, but he wants what's best for Deer and Fox. And so it's needed to have that type of connection. Now I will say, coaches, whatever, like don't force it. Yes. yes, that's terrible. That's yep. the yeah. worst. I've been in college, and it's the worst. When you if you, don't, don't, if you don't connect, you don't connect. Yeah, like it's tough. Bonding, it's a tough balance because necessary. Necessary. you want so hard to build something, but it just it has to sometimes be organic. It, just, it has it, to yeah. be organic. Like sometimes it's just not meant to be. We've got more with De'Aaron and Rose coming up. We did want to mention this though: Deuce and Mo officially on Patreon.com. Patreon. If you go to Patreon.com/slash Deuce and Mo. You can get access to some awesome perks by supporting the show. Merch discounts, check. Mm. Check it out. Maybe early episode drops. Bop, bop. Oh, maybe some other stuff. Just check it out. Patreon.com slash Deuce and Mo. You can also be a YouTube member if you don't use Patreon. Many ways to support the show. Yeah, and just remember, just by being here, you are supporting us. Just by clicking that like button. Just by commenting. Subscribing. Thank you so much for supporting us in any way possible. We're just trying to make this small business keep growing. Appreciate all you Deuce Bags and Morons. What was your guys' reaction? Because, of course, you knew Mike a little bit, Mike Brown. When you started hearing, oh, there's a chance Mike's going to take the King's job. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, so it was our, our, our final, the final three was Mark, Mark Jackson, Mike, and yeah. Steve Clifford. I think. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I forgot about oh, Steve Clifford. Yeah. 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 
like I played against Steve Clifford, uh, played yeah. against Mike, and we all know Mark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was like I didn't tell them which one I preferred. Like yeah. they told me what the top three candidates were, and I was like, okay, like I'm thinking about how these coaches have coached in the past, and I was like, you know, Mike Brown would be perfect. Just because of wow. him coming from that pop tree. And even Steve Clifford, like the way that he he is a, I'm not going to say stick in the mud, but he's from, he's like cut from the same cloth. Yes. Yes. Like yes. He's straightforward. So I'm like, those two are exactly the type of people totally. that, that I feel like this team needs because there's no bullshit. They're going to come in. You need to do it this way, this way, this way. Obviously, they're more defensive-minded coaches, but we have the offensive talent to do whatever we really want to do. So those two, I was like truly thinking about. And yeah. When Mike was hired. I'm like, I'm like that's perfect. This is exactly what this team needs, and it's, it's something that we've never had before. So I was interested to see how guys would take it, and guys took it extremely well from from day one. Yeah, it, it's interesting, like Mike's path too, because it he was a young head coach coaching LeBron. Of course, he had that. Brief run with the Lakers. That was kind of a Which weird I didn't even, team. I didn't even remember. Yeah, I forgot. I mean, about it was that. such a short stint. Was what, yeah. That was when like Nash and Dwight ended up, mm -hmm. and that was a mess. He goes back to Cleveland, then they get a new GM, and then you know he's just ends up getting with the Warriors. And you could tell he learned so much about himself going through all that shit. Like very self aware. Going through yeah, coach is hard. Yeah, <laughs> super hard. And then then you're around a different environment. Maybe you're opening your mind. Like, oh, Steve Kerr does things this way and oh man these players do it like this i, I just think i think the kings got so lucky that he was still available oh, like i can't believe it took it took him this long to get another gig thousand percent i uh, uh, wes and monty from the yeah, yeah yeah they, they've definitely they've definitely turned this, this organization around those two <laughs> wes they've and put monty in, it's put in a lot of work like there's days like you literally see them up there in the office because you can see their office <laughs> from the practice court and they're always working. If you like, try to inch over, you can see the board. They don't bit. sleep. Yeah. 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 And I tell them I am so. Oh. I'm just worried about their health. Because <laughs> Wes, Wes does. Wes does, Wilcox does, um, does not marathon. Like he's always running and around. He's running yeah. And he lives on espresso. No. And so. blueberry muffins. Okay. <laughs> I'm like Wes, that's not a meal. Well, oh, and, and then like you, and Monty. What's Monty's like vest sleep. when it's like 110? We Vegas, make fun of his vest. Like, we, we're like, how many of those you got in your closet? Who said something? Alvin. When I was saying this <laughs> to Alvin uh, yesterday, he's like, why the hell does Monty have that vest on? <laughs> Oh, and I'm like, I'm like, does the vest actually? I've not, I don't, ha, I don't own a vest like that. So yeah. I'm like, does it actually keep you warm? I'm like, my arms are still cold if I have a yeah. vest on. So I'm like, I think he sense. likes the look. I think I, he's embracing it. It's, it's like his look. thing. Yeah, it's, it's his. more so just the look. Because I don't think the vest is actually like doing all that. <laughs> Wes wears vest too. I think it's a GM. Yeah, oh. it's a Kings GM. Yes, if you pay attention, he's a vest. Player. If you keep winning, keep rocking <laughs> the vest. I'll get you any color vest that you want. But like, we'll actually be in a cold place and he'll have a vest on. I'm like, money, my, yeah. my arms will be cold still. <laughs> You're like, but this is jacket time. Yes, Please like, wear, wear a big jacket. puffer or something. Like, it's a, it's a, or it's a, it's a puffer vest. Yeah, no, oh, it's always working. the best. No sleeves. They you play football, so that's true. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Wide off, receiver. So, so. Yeah. um, so speaking of everything that they've been doing, and obviously the vibe of people they like bringing in, which seems to obviously be working. Um, you know, someone like Keegan Murray, for example. Uh, I know you guys are now referring him as Uncle Keegs, uh, Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Keegan. Uh. How how cool has that been? Not only to get to know him, but to see him develop and grow as a basketball player. It's been fun. It's been fun. Keegan's opened up a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, wait till Keegan's, you see him. Ooh. Yeah. Keegan's, His personality. Keegan's is. opened up a lot. It's uh, cause he's still like, he's still Keegan. Like he still has the <laughs> uh, like, I don't know, I don't know Fox why. Like he still does that. <laughs> it's not bad, Keegan. But like now, Keegan will walk in like actually try to crack a joke. It's still in the same tone of voice. <laughs> yeah. But like you can just tell that he's he's opened up a lot, and it's it's fantastic. Like, I've seen him almost basically every day. Besides, yeah, we've like been here. If, if we weren't here, if we like went somewhere, yeah, we've seen Keegan just about every day. And we've worked out every day together. And you guys play one on one too. Yeah, we play ones. Does a he lot. ever get you ever? Uh, he's won some games, yeah. but he hasn't won a day. Okay. okay. Yeah, 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 I'm not gonna let. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. But that, uh, I mean, it's um, <clears throat> I just think you talk about the experience you guys got as a team in the playoffs. But I think about for him, I'm like, dude, mm. a rookie lottery pick doesn't. You, I mean, think about what you had to walk into yeah. as a rookie. Like mm. you guys, a lot of losing. It's tough. 
he walks in and he's not only like on a good team, but he's yeah, starting. He's playing, he's playing and then the playoffs, minutes. like he got better at the end. Like yeah. you saw, and I'm like, dude, he doesn't get rattled. I mean, he went through the highs and lows of being a rookie in the NBA. And it, I don't know, it, it was just, it, it was cool. And I just think about the experience, like he's going to gain so much from last year. I think Keegan's going to be so much better this year than he was last year. Um, like he's gotten a lot more comfortable dribbling the ball and creating for himself. Yes. Like, I mean, we saw it in the California Classic. Yeah. I mean, he was, probably shouldn't have been out there, but <laughs> I'm glad he did. Though it was no, no, no it's in like I'm glad he played as well. So it's because it's it's cool to you can work on stuff and work on stuff one on one, but does it translate? I know a lot of guys that can get to it one on one, yeah, but it doesn't translate to when there's five guys on the court. Guys are long. There's people in help side. Sometimes it doesn't translate, and I'm glad that he was able to go out there. And I mean, it also builds your confidence. Like he went out there and you. You did what you were supposed to do. You got 40, and now you're not playing in Vegas. Like, that's step backs, Duncan. He's, yeah, but he's, even hearing players like Clay Thompson and Paul George. I was just about to say Like, that. how cool was that? Hearing I mean, that podcast and hearing them be like, they talking about him and his shooting. Yeah, and like rookies. Clay literally said, um, he was like, uh, rookies don't do that. Yeah, mm. yeah. Keegan's different. It, it, and it is, and I'm sure, like, De'Aaron, for you, that's got to be... <laughs> <laughs> Duh, this is such an obvious answer. That's got to be great for you, just obviously understanding what you can do with your speed, getting to the rim, but also having actual weapons on the outside as well to find. Oh, yeah, and then adding someone like Sasha. Oh, my gosh. Uh, sorry, you you, you were at the out, press conference. Watch him work out. Yeah, we we, um, we played ones. Yeah, we played ones yesterday, me and him cool. and Kevin. Um, but you watch him work out, and it's, it's like, such a quick release. Oh my gosh. He hit That's one. Water. He hit one on me. I'm like, what the <laughs> <laughs> But no, he's and he's a worker. He's he is a workhorse. Um but yeah, he's just the type of guys that we have on the team, just guys who are smart, guys that know how to play basketball. And that's why I say, um, I think I said it on Twitter, I'm like, yeah, we have plays, like we're one of the teams that run the most amount of plays. But for the most part, it's just actions. Like, yeah. yes. re react, something happens, this happens, something happens, it triggers this, and that's how we play. Yeah, I, I think you were asked about Sasha during the season. And I, yeah, I was like, I wonder how much he knows about him. And then you went off, like, talking about his game. Like, oh, so De'Aaron's been kind of paying attention to what Sasha's doing. Like, mm -hmm. you're excited to maybe add this guy. I think he's going to be like, I watched him in the Euro League, and I'm like, oh, he's just going to fit. Like, it's just the he shooting, right into off us. ball yeah. movement. I mean, <laughs> did you? <laughs> For real? No. Oh, we wanted him. So bad. We couldn't tell, you know, so, everyone just flying overseas for him. Yeah. So what, what, what was it I about it for them. you guys? I was like, why didn't you tell us? We would have gone. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were Baby being rain. Dead. Let's and go. I think it was like the last game. And yeah. then Matina was like, well, it's too late now. Or I think it was Wes was like, well, it's too late now. And I was like. Okay, well, that's an ask that we would have done. <laughs> you need to let yeah. us know next yeah. time. We need to get on the recruiting. That is like, so cool. You're like, especially me. Hi, sign me up. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> like, what was it? What is it about him for you guys? Like, what what jumped out to you? I mean, um, obviously the shooting. Um, without dribbling. Like, yeah, oh. literally he's getting 25, and he took three dribbles in the game. Um, Very clay esque. Yeah, mm. the cutting. Yeah, he just understands how to play. Obviously, he's not super athletic, but he just knows how to play basketball. Yep. And that's what we need. That's what we want as a team. And it just adds another piece. It adds another weapon. It spreads the floor out. It just makes us a much better basketball team. And I think, obviously, for us, we know defensively we need to be better. Um, he's come over and he knows he needs to be better as well. But he's, like I said, he's a worker. He's someone who's going to work until he's good at something. So um, he just, like I said, he just fits right into our team. And he's, he's so smart. He speaks four languages. Yeah. I was like, bro. That's insane. Yeah. That's Americans. Are I know. Yeah. We could barely speak so one. Dumb. We're, I'm like, We're a little yeah. behind. In yeah. the, it's always in the crazy category. when they, they uh, apologize for like the Like not saying of, something yeah. right. Yeah. I'm like, stop it. Yeah. Are you kidding like, me? I, yeah. You can barely please. speak English well. It's like Sabonis too. Like, the, you know, you have someone speaking Spanish. Like it's nothing. I'm like, it's so impressive. Or even yesterday, or it was at Sasha's press conference. Someone like asked him a question yeah. in Spanish. In Spanish he's, he's like. I can say it. Let me say it in English. <laughs> He's like, like I know everything you said, though. I'm like, okay, it's okay. Everyone's good here. Everyone's so smart. Oh, yeah, I, so. I think that's the thing I've been um, most impressed about is everyone's just like I, IQ, basketball IQ. I mean, um, I feel like you, you just said it defensively. If you have 
a high IQ team defensively, and especially like everyone's going to buy into Mike Brown's philosophy on the defensive end, you can get shit done. Yeah, I mean, everybody's not going to be a lockdown defender. Right. But if you're smart, you can be a great defensive team. And, I mean, that's always, that's always going to be what it comes down to. I mean, even the defensive player of the year, how many times are they on the team that has the best defensive rating? Like, probably not <clears throat> at times. Yeah. But the team that has the best defensive rating is usually – Obviously, they probably have a big that's like that, but usually the guys around them are just smart team defenders, and you get it done. You know, I, I just think about the the ride you've been on since coming to Sacramento, lottery pick. The second year, you guys won 39 games. It was like, oh, is this team going to go in a great direction? Probably be a playoff have won team. like 45. And then, mm. boom, it goes yeah. down again, and it's just like, oh, man, is it ever going to turn around? I think fans felt it, but I feel like, in the months before Sabonis got here, I felt like you were wearing it. Like you, like it's just tough. I mean, when you want well, something so bad, yeah, yeah, too. yeah. That's I again. I don't know. That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> um, is like I, when I watch, I'm like, I feel like he's feeling this because you come here with this, like you're going to be a franchise guy and turn this around, and it's just not turning around. It's not necessarily your fault, but like you're feeling it. So. After Sabonis gets here, I, we always joke about it. I swear that you guys were not a good team, but Sabonis gets there with you. It was against Minnesota. It's a sold out lot. First, the first iconic day they, like flew in, hug. And, and that's the thing that at the you guys had that hug at the end of the game. And I always <laughs> joke, I'm like, dude, this is when relief. it turns. Like it was like a relief. Um, yeah, how did you manage like the lead up to that? And then what were the emotions after you realized this could be something good? Um, I mean, losing is not fun. I know yeah. you're going to say losing is no. fun. Um, <laughs> so like doing that, like, and I said it before, like a whole life I've been winning. I've been in position to win a championship no matter what level it's been. Um, so going through that for years, it's like, like I'm tired of it. Yeah. Like, I, like obviously I, I want to be able to be a part of the team that takes us out of this hole, but it's like, it's hard. Yeah. Um, and I said before too, like I didn't know the trade was gonna happen. Like no one knew. Right. None of us knew. Um, but when it happened, it's like, well, I've never played with a big man like this. I've never played um, with someone who's been an all star. Well, I guess Vince Carter, but that doesn't, yeah. that, that doesn't count. <laughs> he was all the time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've never yeah. played with a with a guy that's you know about to enter his prime, who's already been an all star, been to the playoffs, and they've been the focal point of a team. So I'm like, wow, we could, we can really help each other. And then, obviously, Monty and Wes, they did their job, and they got the talent and the shooters around us. And like you said, from that, from the moment that, honestly, I spoke to them when they came in uh, for their physicals, I'm like, this, like, we can really turn this around. This could really be something wow. special. And you see, I mean, team that just won a championship, best two players, center, point guard. I'm like, yeah, that can happen. That, that can work. And you just, you continue to play off of each other. You continue to build together you continue yeah. to, with the guys around you you continue to build together and i mean we've seen it we've seen it be done and we feel like we we have a chance to do that what was that probably the most challenging time of your career just that that time period right before yeah, that yeah because it's like people are like oh you're getting paid blah blah you should be happy and it's like bro you don't <laughs> regardless like when you're on the court you're not thinking about how much money you're making right like, you're truly not thinking yeah. about that i can guarantee you not one person Unless they're probably in a contract year. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, no one's thinking about that. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's not like you're not having fun going into most games. Like, uh, how much are we going to lose by today? Mm. Like, you're not. That's not Especially fun. when you're going, a competitor. Yeah. Like, like, you've grown up your whole life wanting to win every single game. No matter what sports you're playing or what video game or what board game you're playing, you want to win. Yeah. And it starts to take a toll on you. For sure. It is so funny that that is the line for so many people. Like... <laughs> can't feel bad for them they're making <laughs> money and it's like wait what about like doing the thing that you love that actually in like being successful at it actually being more fulfilling right and mm -hmm. and i i remember that time and it was i mean it was it was tough for a lot of people but like i remember being able to kind of see it with you in like your body language and it was more it was like the first time that i've just felt like not bad. I don't want to say like, oh, I felt so bad. I just, I just felt like this guy has something that has not been unlocked and I want to see it. Like, I think the world needs to see it. I think the basketball world needs to see it. And I think finally 
we got to see that. And I don't know if that's because Domas came along and, and added this extra element or you're playing with one of your best friends in Malik Monk and or Monty and Wes are doing the right things and putting the right pieces around you, Mike Brown. It's, it's all that. It's, yeah, and it, say, I think it's, it's, all it's, all, it. it's all of it. It's, all it's of just it. great that that combination could, can actually do that. But I also think like, you know, being happy, like and seeing how happy you are, obviously you guys together, you on the floor, um, has led in that direction. But Malik Monk, I wanted to get to him because I'm sure he makes you happy. How cool is it that you get to play with one of your best friends? It's it's fun. It's fun. We all know Malik's a, a loose cannon. Gotta, <laughs> your mom, your couple, mom said that too. Yeah, yeah. He's got sometimes you gotta make sure he's in line a little yeah. bit. But that's a good thing to have. Like you never know what you're gonna get out of Malik <laughs> at times. At times. Yeah, he keeps life, he keeps basketball, he keeps everything interesting. And he's, I mean, he comes in every day and it's like he lights up a room. Yeah. Like if someone's down or someone's, Malik's coming in and it's like, no, like we're, we're, we get to work, we get to play basketball, like let's have fun doing it. So uh, he's a joy. He's definitely a joy those, to have around for us. Those energy guys, like we always talk about that in this league, like the importance of them. And I think, and, but what's great about him, he can actually play and mm. have that energy. How much does that energy actually bring on the floor, especially like as a six man? I, I honestly, and I, I think that's why like on the road, <clears throat> I think we were a better team because it's like on the road, obviously you have some fans in the, in the arena, but other than that, like it's just y'all. It's, it's all you got. Everybody else in here is cheering against you. And Malik is someone who, you go into a road environment, he's like, what's up? Like, <laughs> I feel like it's a, a type of swag, right? Yeah. That, like, in comparison, we saw to Shump. Shump, I feel like, was yes. so important. And yes. I know we did it, but, like, the trade, when we traded Shump, I think our team morale went down. You lost the swag. You saw it go down, scores, yeah. Right? Like, and that's the type of stuff that Malik has. Mm -hmm. He just brings some shit to him. That yeah. not a lot of people have. I, I always talk about the the time you and Sponis hug, but then the other time that jumps out to me is the that Clippers game where you and Monk were oh. going off. And then after the game, you guys were so fired up after the game <laughs> talking <laughs> shit. It was the it was so <laughs> hilarious. But that's when it was such an interesting time because if I remember right, it was I think it was after the trade deadline. And um, people that were, game? Was it after or, the trade uh, deadline or right before? I, I just know we had a uh, we were on a, I have back a shitty back memory back. To back. I, no, yeah, I yeah. I, I just remember it. it was like a time where people were like, "Man, the Kings we either make any moves. didn't make any moves." Like, and the Clippers were right there trying to make a little bit of a push. And it was around it because Westbrook it was one of his first games. That's right. Yeah. And he was already born. So when was that? Yeah, mm. this is before All Star already. break, but um, after the deadline. After the deadline. Okay. Yeah. So it's one of those. Yeah, games. and I mean that game. I mean, I'm sure you're just like that was one of the most insane games to ever yeah, play that was in. Nuts. But you know, and I know some people are like, oh, just offense. I, it was the most high level like offensive shot performance. Making. The right. shot making. It wasn't like guys weren't trying no. on defense. I'm like, yo, there hasn't been a lot of just open oh, shots, no. and like Kawhi's hitting in that third quarter back Ooh. threes over double teams. I'm like, bro, what shot is shot going on? on? <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? That was pure, and, pure entertainment. Exactly from a basketball standpoint, I remember people who didn't watch the game. If you just saw the score, they're like, "Oh, oh that's no cute." Being, yeah. Yeah. It's an old star yeah. game. Kawhi was like a, he was like twenty one for twenty five, yeah. and oh. every <laughs> shot he shot was contested. Somebody was there. Yes. It was it was the craziest game, and we were so tired because we were on the back end of a back to back. I don't remember who played before, <clears> but I'm like, if we would have came back. Because we came back in the fourth quarter. I'm like, we would have came back, went to double overtime, and then lost. I'm like, I would have been so pissed. Well, and that's the thing that's underrated about that game, because you guys were down like 14 in the fourth, mm -hmm. down six in overtime, down six in double overtime. There were many times it's like, uh, and it's a bonus foul out, but it was just, you guys like, did not give we up. We could have just thrown in the yeah. towel. And, but I think like that fourth quarter, the way we were start, we were able to start creating turnovers, getting layups, I think that... When that happened, I was like, you know what? We can win this game. Yeah. And from then on, I mean, obviously, Malik made big shots. I made big shots. But I feel like we got stops when we needed to get stops. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that you said that was after Rain was born. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> it's crazy to think, like, you were probably, and I don't I don't know your situation, if you guys ever did, like, night doula stuff or anything. But you're still no. probably, okay, no, 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 then no, you were no, probably no, no, getting no. less sleep. Listen. As a new dad, I told Darren, if we're gonna do this, we're doing like 
this. We have no nannies, no night doula. Oh, Damn. I guess grandma. My grandma. God. But grandma does what grandma does. Yeah. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of people who are blessed enough to have their moms here yeah. bring in their moms to mm. help. Yeah. But no, we don't do, we didn't do any of that. Like, oh. Rainy is with us. Yeah, he's with us all, all the time. He sleeps in between us, oh. right? And if not, he sleeps with my mom and my dad. He you guys. So credit to De'Aaron. He was doing this on the no sleep. That's amazing. I mean, that's Incredible. true. Like, you, I don't know, what it brought out, Getting like, some up, super dad power <laughs> out of you. Like, I don't know what it was. I, because that was when I was on the, um, I think I had eight 30 point games in a row. Yes. I, and I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It was, I'm like, nothing changed. <laughs> Shots just started going Except in a little rain. while. Rain yeah, besides Rainy was and here. Less sleep. Like, oh, gonna... so maybe the less sleep. No, is I'm not going to credit that. I'm not, not going to give credit to that. But that's the only thing that changed. He's like, I was, I was so upset when I when the streak broke. Oh. <laughs> oh. I was like, I could have had the yeah. It was, it was cool. It was yeah, cool. that is so cool. When when did you realize? Like, I know you're probably excited. Oh, Mike Brown's coming. I guess Sabonis. We, you know, they made all these moves around us. But when did you know? Like, all right, we're going to be all right because I mean, you got. People forget this too. Right, own own four. four, and people yeah. are like, "What? Same old shit." We. I remember us talking. Going, I'm like, you know what? I, I'm I not trying to be a homer here. I'm like, I do feel like it looks different. Rase and I mm. saw each other on the on the sideline, and I will never forget. We were saying, and maybe it was later in the season, but we even said we're like, when everyone was freaking out with own four, we saw something was different. The way you were playing, it didn't matter how. It didn't matter that you were losing. It was how you were playing. Um, honestly, during, uh, right before training camp, cause we had most of the guys in town. So we were playing pickup and I'm like, we haven't had this type of talent since I've been here. So I'm like, okay, this is definitely going to be different. And then just the way that our co like our coaching staff, like, I love our coaching staff, everybody. So the way that like Jordy and, um, and Mike bounce off of each other and then like Luke and Jay Triano who handles the offense, the way that they bounce each other, bounce off of each other. I'm like, this can be really, really good. And obviously, we started on four. We we're all, we we're in all the games. Yeah. Um, but then once we got that first one, I feel like it kind of lifted off guys' shoulders. It's like, okay, guys, we're like we're a good team. Like we so, might like we might be in last right now, but we're a good team. It's a long season. And once we won that first game, because I think we went zero and four, then we won seven in a row, or I don't know what it was. But once we won that first game, I think everybody was like, we're a good team. We can be one of the best teams in the league. Funny story too. He didn't freak out. We didn't freak out. Remember? We yeah. Had that conversation. Yeah. And I'm like, we're fine. <laughs> I remember seeing Monty and Wes, and I was like, y'all, we're fine. Because in Wes was like, I know we're fine. So, so mm. Monty. Funny story because we had landed. I could have swear maybe we we're in LA. I don't know. But D texts Wes and says, we're going to be fine. Thank you for Kevin Hoder. Like, it was oh. a simple text. <laughs> like, we're 0 and 4. I don't know if you're freaking out, but I'm not. So we're going to be fine. But also, thank you for Kevin Herter because <laughs> Kevin came out with the flamethrower. Yeah, that made was his fine. life so much easier. Yeah, he's shooting step back threes, and I'm like, what? I didn't know he had that in his bag. Wow. I knew he had it, but I didn't know he was gonna come out and show it that quickly. And like, even and you, be that comfortable, dude. That was that that was so fun to watch, like how comfortable he was and how he was like a weapon right away. Right away. And I'm sure. You having that confidence, just even in that text, makes them feel more confident in what they're about to see as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, and Mike, Mike talks about this. We need everybody in line from the top guy in the front office to mm -hmm. the ball boys, the last guys on the bench. And they did that. Like the communication between the entire organization. I'm like, I'm like Mike, I'm, and I've, I'm like, I've never seen it before. I would tell Luke about some of the stories. Uh, before they came, and he's like, I can't believe that's an that's a organization. Like, yeah, it's like night and day. And oh, I, yeah. I tell Keegan all the time, like, Keegan, you're lucky. <laughs> you're <laughs> like, so lucky. I'm like, you're yeah. lucky because you didn't have to go through any of the stuff that I had to go through. Yeah, he, like, he's coming in, winning. There's a beam in the air. Like, everything's good. Everyone's happy, dude. Yeah, there's nothing like the come up either. I said it all year. I'm like, Kings fans, just enjoy this journey mm -hmm. right now because like. It's never gonna feel like this again. Yeah, I mean, it's it could still be fun. You don't it. want a feeling like that again. No, like, and that's a like great the breaking point. a streak like that. Yeah, like you don't. But want every that win felt again. so exhilarating at times last year. Just felt, you know, and I know it may feel a little. There's you know expectations like it's just gonna feel different. Yeah, um, but I, it still can be fun. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and as a team, like we continue to tr to have fun. Like we wanted yeah. to have fun during practice, during games. Obviously, at tight moments, like 
people tense up. We're like, yo, like, let's just continue to do what we're doing, like stay in the moment. And um, I think that was what was big for us this year, that we didn't have guys really tense up too much. Obviously, it would happen at times. That's natural. But, um, like, as a team, we we stayed – we tried to stay – as as loose as possible. I mean, like the smoke machine in oh. Away Game. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, yeah. was so. I think that was shame. Nick. I think that was Nick, one of our uh, one of our strength and conditioning guys. Stop. Yeah, to we'll see try. how the celebrations evolved from like y- chain to fog smoke, machine, lasers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just it looked like fun. Yeah, you just you want to make it enjoyable. Yeah, like we do this so much. You're playing 82 games. We're together all the time. Like you want to make it. You want to make it fun. And we and it was. Coaches, players, strength guys, um, our medical staff, equipment, like everybody I felt like enjoyed, you know, being around each other. Obviously, this is still work and we still have a yeah. job to do, but we tried to, they tried to make it as, as enjoyable as possible. I think mm. that's why we had such a such a good year. Well, and speaking of, of one of the big moments, the first playoff game, um, I guess, oh. I guess, I guess making the playoffs like, you know, this is a whole topic, but let's get into that first game we've heard from like Davion and Kevin talking about how like they got chills coming out of that tunnel and like what that felt like I know just from uh, Dude, born and raised minutes in before Sacramento the game and like the everyone's standing and, and it was we're feeling a certain thing so what the hell were you feeling yeah so because our game got pushed back because of whatever game that was going on before so like mm-hmm. everybody like the game probably should have been started so everybody's already in their seats and we come out and like I almost shed a tear I'm like this was because every you see all white, the ovation that everybody Loud. It was it was nuts. Like, I'm like, I don't know how many people have run out of the tunnel besides um, who just did this, Nebraska, Nebraska's volleyball yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. Like, you oh, come yeah. out and everybody's already in their seats. Oh, it was, it was like a surreal moment coming out for the, for that first playoff. My first playoff game in 16 years. Like, it was coming out of the tunnel was just, it was amazing. I, I was gonna say. I mean, you were obviously there. What? What? Sorry. It was incredible. <laughs> I mean, I can't. I can't add. Like, it's unexplainable, really. Yeah. Wow. Was... People don't understand how. I was just happy for the fans. Let's just leave it at that. Because mm. yeah. you had been through so much, right? Totally. And people don't understand. I hate the Sacramento has no fans. I don't. Mm. I don't know where that ever came from. I mean, even when we, we were losing, sucked, yeah, we, yeah, there were times we had we were there. stands. Right, like you never left us, and just like it invigorated the city. Yeah, yeah. it totally like did. Downtown, we had beam billboards, yeah. everything. And, I mean, we've just driven by, and it's like you see the beam here, a beam there. Jerseys. You see a picture of the team. It's the beam was like, the best idea. Like it's crazy that like a simple thing like a laser in the sky would like bring people together. I also thought about like if it had been during a year, they like hey they unveiled it when you win like twenty five games. It, no one. Uh, is it I don't think it would have hit the same. No, nope. but it's so different. since it came at the beginning yes. of the year, it's like okay, y'all have to be good now. Yeah. Like y'all yeah. better be good, or this is gonna be. <laughs> I mean, we would we would lose a game, and the other teams like, oh, some 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 the beam, yeah. and it's like, oh my god, when Trey did that caption with the beam, I wanted, I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to text him like, really, <laughs> why? Well, how great is that though? That like the more haters, like the more team social medias were like like trolling you about guys after beam. a loss about the beam or something. Yeah. It's like, great. We, That's cool. This is a thing. We're this on their radar. Thing. Like we, the, the respect is almost there. Like they're scared. Oh, they're, they're making jokes about the beam. Okay. Right. Get ready to die on a Tuesday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that so was great. Wait, wait, how long did it take you to get, get over the, the series against the Warriors? Mm. Like, um, he didn't watch the, he didn't watch yeah, the, I didn't watch. The, okay. I watched some of the, um, some of the Boston uh, Miami series, yeah. and I watched some of the finals. But other than that, I think I saw one of one game of Golden State um, LA, and it's only because we were eating, we were in San Antonio actually, and we were eating, and they had the game on, and I was already facing that direction. Damn. So, so like I was like naturally. He hit. He it. hit him with one. Of the leaves. Like I don't want to. So so it hurt. It, it was <laughs> turn this back towards it. Like, I don't want to watch this. So it was obviously something that you were like. It just was bugging you still. Yeah, I mean, same thing honestly happened when we uh, in college whenever we lost. I didn't yeah. watch the Final Four or the championship. Mm. The only thing I actually missed, I mean, the only thing I actually saw was like the missed rebound uh, when Carolina played Oregon. Mm. That's like the only thing I saw. Um, but yeah, I mean, I felt like we had a chance. Obviously, I think Steph did what's, what's great to do in Game ridiculous. 7. I, um, How? 
But yeah, I mean, it, it definitely hurt. But I'm like, okay, this is our first time. Um, we lost to the team that just won the championship. It's okay. I just still didn't want to watch. The rest yeah, of yeah. Shit. But um, I mean, it made me like feel good. It made me feel good that we were able to get to the, to this position when nobody thought we people thought we'd be a play a play in team and me people sorry cry about people <laughs> cried up about us being healthy where yeah. guys are playing through injuries. So I'm like, I mean, we you, had a good season. We didn't talk about that. You you were hurt in the playoffs too. I, you yeah, got hurt in the broke, playoffs. Yeah, I yeah, broke my finger. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, we did everything we could, um, but we can build off of this. this. We don't want this to be a one-off. We want to continue to build off of this. So uh, I was I was hurt for a little bit, but like after a week, I'm like, okay, let's enjoy our off season. Let's Good. get my finger better. Let's yeah. let's get um, let's get better during this off season, and let me enjoy my family, and we'll be back here at. We'll be back here next year. So I wasn't, I wasn't, it wasn't too bad. So now have your expectations, obviously they've changed because you saw what you guys are capable of doing, but like, does that just mean like, oh, we have to get past the first round of playoffs or like, what, what is that mindset after a season like that? Um, I mean, I definitely think the goal is to definitely get past the, the first round of playoffs. I think we have the team to do it. Obviously the West has gotten better, but We've played together. We've we've grown together. So I feel like we have that we have that camaraderie as a team. Um, we know what we need to work on. Like as an offense, we know that we're okay. Even in the playoffs, where we weren't shooting great. We were in every game, besides game three and seven. Mm -hmm. um, but defensively, we were better, and we know what we can do defensively. And we just have to put that all together. And if we put that all together, I think we're I mean, number one offense. Even if that doesn't hold, or your top five, top ten offense. If we could be top 15 defense, and if we could be top 10 defense, like we know that we are one of the teams that can win a championship just because as an offense, we have the ability to explode anytime. We have multiple guys who put up 30. I think we had like seven guys, seven or eight guys last year that scored 30 in a game. Like we know that offensively, we can always explode at any given time. We so we just joking. know defensively. Like who needs who needs defense when you're going <laughs> to score 170 <laughs> points a game? Well, it's, well, I think the one like – underrated thing too about last year is how fast you guys clicked offensively with so many new people too you know what i mean like it's yeah. like it's one thing to have the talent but i mean it watching you guys it seemed like you guys had played together for a couple of years yeah and with that like that's why you need high iq players yep. because they put in coaches put in the concept they tell us these are the things that can happen and after that it's like it's on y'all like michael call a play and it's like okay that's the play he's calling but if you have to break it off because something happens, you do it. If you shoot it because you felt this was a good shot, you shoot it. And he gave us all the freedom to do that. Obviously, when it came down to it, there were certain stuff that we know we're going to get to at the end of games. And if it works, you keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. But they just give us a few, op I mean, a few options in every single play. And guys just feed off of each other. And I know the guy you're wearing on your... I, first of all, I love that you're wearing a Sabonis shirt right now. That's just great. It's everyday wear. <laughs> like, Plus, she can't, if live. she spills something on it, we'll be okay. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> but that, I mean, Sabonis, like, it's just... That guy's just such a stud. Like, he's such a smart player. W what do you like about his game? Like, what, what when you think about he's him... He's so smart. Yeah. Right? And you're so unselfish. Yep. He's a hunter when it comes to setting screens. Like, you hit oh. somebody... Like, set a screen and hit somebody. But that is in, a huge thing. In practice, like, how do you navigate? Or, well, I guess you wouldn't really well, have to navigate to his hit. screens. Yeah, but I guess, like, like, yeah, like oh, he my so he, God. And he came home and he said, you know what? He gets me so open. And I knew he would because he used to hit me whenever yeah. we used to yeah. play. Yeah. So you hit somebody, you set screens, and it makes it opens everything up because now you're at an actual advantage. Yes. Right? When you hit somebody. And he has good pace into his screens. That is so underrated. It's sprint so into your screen. Mm -hmm. Like you're sitting there lollygagging, then your <laughs> your defender can stay attached. It's got to be the most frustrating thing, especially as a point guard, when you don't have someone that understands like, like how the, to like. There's an art. There's like I was just about to say the screening. art form of a screen, and it's in when it's well done. You know me. Like when we talk about it after games, I just go off about one screen for like five minutes because it's it truly is. It's more than just like, oh, you got someone open. You cared enough about your teammate to get them open. You're not getting a stat for this. Yes. No. The willpower to do it. Just the understanding to do it right for your teammate, for your point guard. Yeah. I, yeah. I love him. I, I need that shirt. Also. He just wants to win. <laughs> yeah. 
He does want to win. He he is so passionate. I like it when he yells. <laughs> like he's so composed often. Yeah. That when he'll go and dunk on somebody, or he's yeah. a big cheerleader for his teammates. I look at that. I look at how it much matters. you cheer for your teammates. Mm-hmm. Like whenever he first came, I have never seen De'Aaron get chest bumped by someone so many times. <laughs> like they're meeting chest every single <laughs> position, and it's like, well. That's a real, like, a stat that, like, my college teams used to take, keep track of. How many times are you touching your teammate? Wow. Like, power of, what is it? I don't even know what it is. Like, positivity of yeah. touch. Yeah. Like, you don't, have to, of you don't have to talk. Right. Because Mike always, like, compares, like, I mean, he's coached Kobe. He's coached LeBron. He's coached Tim Duncan. Obviously, Steph, Katie, all these guys. And he's like, Tim Duncan wouldn't say anything, but he'd go around and he'd make sure he touched everybody. Yeah. He'd make sure everybody felt like they were they were appreciated like on the team and especially when it's coming from the best players it makes Matters. it even that much more better so he was he was just always tells me about how guys led in different ways like lebron was more vocal Kobe was more vocal uh steph and timmy weren't as vocal but they did different things that made their teammates feel like you know you appreciated them so uh, those are just different like a couple little things right. that i think about during games yeah and it Domas makes us better. Both. Yeah. He's yeah. vocal and he's a toucher. Mm-hmm. Like you'll see a couple times where it's a turnover, he'll go or someone's down, he'll literally go to them in their face and be like, "Come on, we're fine." Yeah. So like he's that emotional person that you need in the huddle sometimes, or oftentimes. I yeah. Would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've noticed him get on guys, but he loves on guys too, and it's just exactly. like we talking about with Mike Brown. Like, oh, you talk about him from the military background. But if he was just yelling all the time, it wouldn't connect with you no. guys. But because, like, there's, there's, again, it goes back to, like, authentic relationships and mm-hmm. organic, building that trust. And, no, it's just so it's so cool to see. It just seems like the vibes are great. And I feel like you're more comfortable than ever. Obviously, you've helped a lot with that, I'm sure. But, like, not only with your game, but as a person. And, I mean, it's just part of growing up, too. Like, Oh yeah, yeah. It's like, just crazy. It's cr- uh, yeah. Oh, Nineteen. Like, yeah, you're you're literally <laughs> yeah. a kid. Like you can't even drink yet. It's so really to think about. Really got it's so little like. little and that's kid. what's wild. That's another thing I think we don't talk enough about with like some of these athletes. Like, yes. They are com- when I was nineteen, I was doing some <laughs> dumb shit. Yeah. You know. Oh, and, like, I'm so glad you're, I wasn't you're... in front of anyone at nineteen. Hey, yeah. welcome <laughs> to the NBA. You need to help turn around the team. Like that. It's just a lot, and it, you have to learn. You have to go through the tough times. You have to mature. It, it's a lot to navigate, but it's cool to just see it all come together for you and like all the work you've put in. And like, I, it probably f- feels even sweeter now because you went through all that. Yeah, definitely. Like, if I feel like if you just win your whole life, you kind of never know what it's like yeah. to to feel that. But I mean, I'd rather have not gone through that's it. Yeah. No, that's true. That's a good but, point. That's a good point. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> no, it's, it's great just knowing the position that we're in and knowing that we're actually not the only people that have that expectation anymore. Like, we came into the season as a team, only us probably yeah. expecting us to be where we were. Um, but now you kind of see the respect. We're playing on TV, what, 20, 22? 22 times? Yeah. yeah. Right? That's yeah. 22 wow. games on TV. We had two last year. One was a substitute because someone yeah. else was playing, and I think someone was hurt, so they put us on against the Knicks. Yeah. Um, but it's great that we that we have people who have that expectation for us as well because I think they have us for 40 is it 48 games? 49 games? Probably going to be the 10th seed with like 42 wins. So it's, or 41 yeah. wins. It's going to be, the West it's gonna is, be crazy. West is interesting. I feel like it looks a little, so, I, that's what I was telling Morgan. We were talking yesterday on a podcast. I'm like, look around the league. There's not a whole bunch of shit teams. Like, there's yeah. like a couple of teams you're like, ah, oh, it might be a little rough for them. But there's so much talent in this league. I mean, you talk about the West, but in general, there's not like easy games all the time. I just oh. feel like the league is more stacked than it's ever been. And every time, there's a trade happening. I'm like, Daniel's ass is east. <laughs> Dude, yeah. you're making I it like know. KD, why you gotta come? Kyrie, what are you? Like, what are you doing, Everybody Kyrie? Okay, what are you doing? Here. Not James. I'm like, bro, please stay <laughs> yeah. over I mean, there. Our, our division made the playoffs last year. Yeah. That's no insane. one would have picked you guys to win it either, but that's I know. Wild. Stay over there. Bye. Some parody. <laughs> well, and now... <laughs> I know Mike Brown talked about this too. Is like you know last year. I'm sure he's talked to you guys about this. Like you guys are the hunters, and now like people know who you guys are. Like they know what you're about. Although I think you guys have a better team, not only just from like the experience you got, but adding Sasha, yep. even some like Chris Duarte to the mix. I, I just feel like you guys are gonna be a better team. But yeah, there's teams aren't gonna walk in and be like, ah, oh, it's Sacramento tonight. Yeah, I mean I'm cool with that. Yeah, love it. I'm, I'm 
I'm good with that. I mean, once clutch it gets player down, of the year over here. You like down, big moments. Once Come it gets on. down to it, like who's going to make plays? Yeah. And I know that we have guys on our team that can make plays. So I'm, I'm all good with it being the hunter. Mm. And you, regardless of what game we step out there, I'm now we're we're coming. It's fine. And well, you and you don't seem like ever rattled by that moment. Obviously, winning clutch player of the year, but like your first playoff game, you had 38 points. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, and then Thank um, you. yeah, some of the shots you made, some of those, the game winner, Chicago, Orlando, and then I, I, what I always told Morgan was like it, it impresses me with guys who are clutch and they do as often as like you do because everyone knows you're going to get the ball Teams at the end of the game and that you're know probably going to shoot it and yes. you still do it, still shoot it. <laughs> that's wild to me so what what is it about those moments is it is it just like hey to me it's just another moment like is that the key is it you approach it like it yeah it's the end of the game but look this is just the game it's kind of looking at it like that but it's like i mean like you can't be afraid to miss yeah. Like, I'm not afraid to, if I miss a game winner, sometimes you miss. Like, if we shoot an air ball in practice, I'm like, oh, like, sometimes you shoot air balls. They're, they're part of the game. So it's like missing shots at the end of games are a part of games. So I feel like, and like I said before, I'd rather miss it than someone else miss That's it. That's exactly. So, like, I don't know. Like, people ask, I'm like, there's, I don't think I'm really thinking about anything different. It's more so just think about the stuff that you've worked on. Uh, obviously, at times, these are tough shots, but... I don't know. There's, I don't know. I told him in the fourth quarter, for some reason, shots just start going in. I'm like, I've, I've been shooting these same shots all game. And for some reason, shots are going in now. I don't, I don't I mean, really know. It's what the it is. speed. It's, I mean, it's the confidence. Like, you put in the work, dude. It's, you know, it's, it's truly, it's, in, it's wild. I mean, you know this just even as like someone who's grown up in basketball. Like, if there's a certain season where you add a few different things to your game, it's it's so fun seeing how oh they don't know that's coming or this is that much better that it's actually going to dominate and I that's what I feel like I saw from you it's like not only do you have a skill set or with your speed that right. people can't stop now but you it, slow them down and I, oh my god your ability to change speed stay in the air stop it stop it right it's now it's funny too because like obviously everybody like compliments the speed and how athletic I am and I'm like. I don't think people actually realize how like jump shot oriented I was more so this year. Cause like at times just not getting the call. So I'm like, I'm yeah. keep going in there and hitting, hitting the ground. That's how your career ends sooner than you want it to end. So I actually like was a more jump shot. Obviously it was a lot more mid ranges than threes, but yes. it's like floater mid range. were like, if I haven't made anything today, I'm getting to this shot. This is the shot that I'm going to get to. And it's going to get the rhythm going. And then at times, especially because like I'm going right, I'm shooting left, I'm getting fouled while I'm doing it. So it's like, okay, then you can get to the free throw line. You can see it go through the basket. And it just opens up the rest of your game. But I don't know what the percentage of my shots that were layups were. Obviously, I was making them at a high, and I could get to the basket at such a high volume. But I think like the amount of jump shots I was taking this year, I feel like is by far the most I think I've taken in I also in think that you were so successful at the rim is because he picks and chooses his spots. Like, I get it. You want De'Aaron going to the rim every possession, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes I think he can get there a little bit more. Sure. But he knows when to get there, Yep. right? He's He knows how to keep the defenders honest. He knows how to keep them on their heels to go to the mid. Or he's now hit four mids in your mouth. Press up on it. Yes. The, yes. The rim. Yes. So like, yeah, he's shooting 87% at the rim, something crazy like that, 80s. Which it's, allowed those clutch moments to right. happen because then they're like, oh, he's not just going to go all the way to the rim. He's not, he's, like, he's going to stop, pop, wherever he wants to go. He's not crash dummying just to the rim every time. So like, fun. So I get it. We want him to the rim a little bit more. Fine. But, like, <laughs> effectiveness goes down when you know that that's the only thing that you're going to do every day. Yeah, you got to have the balance. And then, like, people act like the mid range is, like, dead. But, like, is it, if you can hit the mid range shot and you and can get it. Mid. Hey, in the playoffs, you need it. Yes. In the, when, when the game starts to really slow down and teams are just taking away threes, you have to be able to get to the shot. Because sometimes that's the best shot you're going to get in the possession. Yeah. Unless you're just going to throw up a bad three. 
or you're going to shoot a layup with a seven footer standing there and two other guys jumping. Yeah. At you. Like sometimes that's just the best shot that you're going to get to. When uh, people get possession. too analytical and they're like, well, the best possession you can get is a three point. Shot. Like no shit. Like we understand the math, but at the same time, <laughs> like the same, like the best thing is for the ball to go through the hoop. And it's, if that's the best shot you can get as a team, as an offense, or even as an individual on that possession, do it. Oh, our thing is, uh, Jay says no hezzy, like no hezzy. Like if you have oh, a three, yes. shoot the ball. Yep. Because now if you had a three and you didn't shoot it, we're probably about to have a bad possession. And he'll Love like that. put it on film. And just about every time we passed up an open three or open shot, wherever it is, the possession ended bad. Wow. Maybe a turnover or just a bad shot at the end of the shot clock. So Smart guy. The, the thing that I, I just thought about when you mentioned that was – was Trey Lyles and him getting confidence? He talked at the end of the season press conference this year. God, I, felt, I was about to tear up listening to that guy I talk know. about being <laughs> in Sacramento. Like you could tell he connected for the first time with a team, and he talked about the connection with you. That's a guy that like I ha- I thought had so many big moments, but what a sneaky good pickup he was. Like I don't think anyone was talking about him when they got him at the trade deadline. It was like he was just another name thrown in there. But one of the trades that just yeah. go at the bottom of the little t- yeah. yeah, but. I, I was. It was so cool to see him get to a spot and be on a team and feel comfortable. Like you could tell, he worked on his body, but like he came in and like they gave him the confidence. I guess he needed. I mean, what did you see out of him this year? Yeah, like you said. I mean, they definitely gave him that confidence. But like, I mean, he's a good player. Yeah. He was top fifteen in his class. He was pick. a lottery like McDonald's pick. McDonald's all Americans together. Yeah, <laughs> which is wow. that's so yeah. cool. Like full circle. Again, that's wild. Again. Yeah, like, we're literally McDonald's and Americans together. The fact that he landed here and this was his first real opportunity to show what he can do is wild to me. Because yeah. he's so skilled. Yeah, like he, he has big body. Obviously, he knew he needed his body to be better, but he did that. He, he can shoot the ball. He yeah. really shoots the ball well. And then he's a smart player. He's still athletic. <clears throat> like he can play. And then just being around a team that obviously we all like gave you confidence to actually shoot the ball because he would pass up. He still probably mm. passed up a lot more shots sure. than we wanted him to. But just knowing that you pass up a shot and everybody on the bench is yelling at you to shoot it gives you confidence to do it. So, I mean, he had a lot of big moments for us this year. And I think... Um, we prayed on that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bring it back. You are just... I mean, it is working. Just, man, <laughs> it was like, how great did Monty and Wes... like? Just a great job that they did to bring back H, right? Because at first, all of us were speculating, okay, we're going to hit two out of three. It was either HB, Trey, or Sasha. Pick yeah. two out of yeah. three. You get all three. Then you extend Domas. Yeah. Like, Jeez. people don't know the depths of what they did what to they keep. To yeah, because that was a real thing, two out of three. So now I'm like, yeah. damn. No, I like, love. We're missing out on somebody, right? And the fact that we kept all three. And we got Domas here for some extra years, guaranteed. You gotta have some huge someone job. like Javel. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I'm able allowed to talk about well, that because I don't know if he's. Oh yeah. Anything. Well, we can, we can yeah. edit that. I'm out. Not, I'm, well, there's I'm, a rumor. I'm not a, G- a, re- I'm not a yeah. GM. Great point. No, it matters. <laughs> what we can say, there's been reports that the Kings could be agreeing to a deal with them. It's okay. all out there. People see it. We'll show it on the screen. So, we may. <laughs> so we may. if that were to happen in some fantasy land, like yeah, you could see what, how he could impact things too, and just have. It's a deep team. It's a really deep team. We have options. Like we have a lot of options, and sometimes it's a curse. I mean, it's a blessing and a curse. Like obviously, everybody wants to play. You only have a certain amount of minutes for everybody. But we were, we had been, you know, looking for someone like him, a great rim protector. Like I don't think people realize how big Javel actually is. I say a lob threat. threat. Yes. Like like no, he's tall and long, but Javel's. Yeah, I remember the game last year uh, here where he wasn't really playing for Dallas, and he comes oh, in. Oh yeah, and he played like eighteen minutes. He had like eleven and nine, and there he was like times, a bit, he was big in that game. Would catch the ball, he's on the basket, he just does this. Yeah, yes. <laughs> like what is going on? Annoying when it's on someone else's team, but <laughs> now. Yeah. Funny enough, I, I saw him at uh, this was a few years ago. We went to Disneyland, and I definitely saw him. I, I'm sure he yeah. was easy to spot. Definitely, yeah. definitely easy to spot. I saw him. Yeah. Dude, well. First of all, or not first of all, uh, lastly, you guys, thank you so much for even coming in. Like, I, I'm beyond happy for you guys 
just this last year for you guys. Yeah. Like, it's so cool. And I just, I know how much you guys love Sacramento too. And to see it, not only like everything's seemingly coming together in like the most perfect way for you guys, like as a family, your lives, the basketball portion, it's just cool to see. And especially knowing like you've been here from the, I mean, you've mm. been through so much in Sacramento, a lot of losing and like to see it all come together, all NBA, all star clutch player of the year, like, and winning, it's just it's just really cool to see. As someone we're both born and raised in Sacramento, and it's just like it's crazy what this team means to the city for sure. And oh, I'm just happy for you guys. I'm no, really. we had to come because y'all are so organic, oh, and y'all do you. the work. I appreciate. You, let that. me tell you, <laughs> you're too kind. I'm not thank you. Fire any shots. Yeah. Y'all, do, <laughs> y'all do the work. That's that's for and that's for don't the keyboard. C- hot take for clicks. Mm, no, let me tell you don't. that, dude. I, integrity. I, I, <laughs> you know i yeah my whole work. thing is um, do the work and you'll be rewarded yeah i mean i love the game and i i being around it so often i see the work and i see the the things that people do to work on their crafts and like i i respect it and you were talking about something earlier like uh, this hot take culture we're in it's mm. like, dude, you got to humanize these athletes like you got to understand who they are as people and i think if you fans connect more with that than anything if you love the game you'll respect the game by talking about it the right way and that's like how we like to go about things and so just again you thank you so much for like trusting us coming over here into the huge do some <laughs> old podcast studios no, y'all are uh, people. We and talking Y'all are pillars in our in oh, our King's so. community. So yeah. we had to. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. She told me about it. Because she, she was saying, um, <laughs> I, trying I to pick a location. Yeah. I'm like, why don't we just go over there? <laughs> well, and, and we came in, and then I was like, Morgan, all right, I don't know. Can we all fit in here? <laughs> we instantly <laughs> came in here and, and I we thought were it would like, be cool to do it here. Now. Because we just actually, we, 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 we update the background every year. So she re up. She updated. See, look, we have our own defensive player of the game chain, kind of. Like, oh, did, we made I don't a know vision. You, did y'all get this made? A, a fan made a it fan for made us. It. Oh, wow. Dude, That's amazing. Dope. That's dope. So, dude, by the way, just real fast. A lot of fan art. Th- this, this vi- so Morgan did a vision board before last season. Literally this, just did a vision board and I said. This is le- before last And I put De'Aaron in the middle. Last, So this is last <laughs> yeah, off. I remember that. Right. And I said, I just, you know, because you know how people like put out energy and i was like if this guy if this guy like takes a leap in his game <laughs> and i wasn't even being like a sh- his shot his whatever like even davion mentioned like how you've taken a leap in your leadership and everything i'm like if this guy takes a leap this team it's gonna, gonna be, be different it's gonna be special and then what else enjoyable basketball oh yeah you put 41 she won 41 i wanted wins, 41 right? wins i put my me and my you, aau you years 41? what you just, what was the 41? The 41 because... For wins. She's yeah. like, oh, I wanted okay, okay. For at least 41. I, wanted I thought 41 it was like a wins. Trey Lyles yeah. ball at first. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I put uh, some of my pictures with my AAU team because those were some of my funnest years. And I was like... And that, that's what's weird, too, because I was like, I want them to be a fun, like, yeah. together. And, and then fun farewell to our incredible 16-year tragedy. There you go. So hey, you were my vision worked. and it worked. So yeah. thanks for okay, well, let's making this. Let's just do it all together. Yeah. 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 <laughs> do you want? Do you want another one? I need one. Okay, yeah. I got I you. Yeah. You know what's funny? Last year we were gonna do our post-it notes of all our goals and our goals. You know, I, I usually bought them and never did. Them. I usually put it in like in my notes. You do mm-hmm. like in my phone. Really? Yeah. Do you do one for this year yet or no? Uh, I haven't done uh, it. No. I usually do it like right before training camp. Okay. Mm. Cool. No. Well, I I. Seriously, we wish you the best of luck all season long. Excited to see you around, obviously. Yeah. But um, good luck with everything, and just thank you guys. Thanks, y'all. No, thank y'all. Awesome. Hell awesome. yeah. Great job, y'all. Great pod. Get home. Deuce and mo, deuce and mo, deuce and mo. They tell you what they know. Deuce and mo, deuce and mo, deuce and mo. Podcast that you know